Hospital Porters, Pride and Dignity, Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Her Panmo TV and welcome to this, the 40th comments reply video. That's right, the 40th time in which I put photons onto Sally to answer your comments. Now, if you're new to this particular channel, you may wonder what I'm talking about. Well, basically, uh, you guys, viewers, you sometimes put comments under my videos. All my comments boxes are open so far. I felt no need to have a comments-free video. Now, um, when I... When you do that, I feel obliged to reply. You take the time to give me your thoughts. Some of your replies are very long. I feel obliged to acknowledge that and perhaps tell you what I think about that. Now, I don't have time to type out replies by text underneath your comments. It's just it's just too much. So what I do is every so often, uh, every, every month to three weeks, it's exactly one month since the last one today, actually. I'm going to try and narrow that down maybe to three to three and a half weeks. I give you a reply video i give you i make one of these reply videos this is the 40th it's the big 4-0 the age that life begins well we'll see about that but um now you may look at this and think that's all very well ben you know but your comments reply videos they're very long aren't they i mean this 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 is one that's nine and a half hours <coughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna watch a nine and a half hour video just to get a reply from one comment it'll take me all day just to get a reply from one comment oh, i'm not gonna put up with that well you don't have to this is the beauty of it. Firstly, my comments reply videos are getting a lot shorter because I'm making them more often. As I said, three weeks to a month I'm aiming for. Uh, secondly, what I'll do is underneath the reply, underneath the comment I'm replying to, I'll put in a little timestamp that says this. Thanks for your comment. It will be answered approximately within. And I'll give you a time span, basically a time period to within one hour within the upcoming comments reply video that is, that is going to be uploaded. So the longest you're going to have to watch to get your reply to your comment is one hour. That's not too bad, is it? Just stick it on while you're cooking or something in the background. You don't have to look at my ugly mug, do you? You can just listen to my dulcet tones. So that's it. Um, that's the reason I do it. There's also another reason. Um, I, I enjoy doing these videos. I think these are good videos. Generally, I think they, they're high quality in terms of their content. I tend to, when I get in my stride, things go quite well. And what's more... You, the viewers, you say you like them as well. I know some of you that uh, watch them all the way through. Hmm, not bad. So, let us begin. Okay, and uh, this is interestingly... Interestingly, before, just as an aside, I, I almost had a video banned the other day. It was um, the, the reply video to Stefan Molyneux on 9-11. It was actually... Um, it was actually... The, the, it was actually listed. It was, rem it was uh, removed due to hate speech. And so, I, of course, I appealed it, and it's been restored, but you, you never know. The, you could tell this bot's doing these things. And now, the last time that happened, they I, re I appealed and they restored it, but then um, uh, about two days later, they banned it again, and this time they did it permanently. Yeah. I'm pleased to say Jamnoise72's initial, um, her original channel's come back as well. Okay, so where are we? Right, <clears throat> so, so we begin. Charles Scott. Now, Charles Scott put this, this is a... Reply to a comment. You must have literally done it maybe just hours after the last comment comments reply video. Charles Scott says to Charles Unleashed, oh, these two have not I've been at it, hammer and tongs, I'll tell you. Um, see this. And he has a YouTube link. I know why you disagree with my comment, because you're a crackpot. I won't pursue this conversation. I'll let you continue with your insane drivel fiction narrative. Okay, what's this then, Charles? Let's have a look, shall we? Okay. Uh now, <coughs> oh, it's Richard D. Hall. This often and Andrew Johnson. All oh, right, uh, all oh, right. This is uh, David Icke and Shapeshifting, part three of three, on Richard D. Hall's channel. Um, it's Andrew Johnson and Richard D. Hall, which is, uh, doesn't narrow it down very much, I know. But this is the one where they're talking about David Icke. I did a review of that. I remember I did a review of that video. Okay. Um, uh, so, I mean, obviously, I've lost the context, really, of this kind of discussion between the two of you. Um, oh, I see Charles got starts off by... Oh, this is on the reply to Caroline. Sorry, this is on reply to Caroline Stevens. And um, this is... <coughs> Charles Scott starts off by saying, I would put David Icke and Steve Bassett and several others. Right. Because... Talking about 9-11, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, this was something I actually addressed in the previous comments reply video. Okay, right. <coughs> Where are we now? Oh, Charlie Veach is back. Oh, my God, it's an old one. <coughs> well, it's from a couple of years ago. And this person says, Ben, have you, I know you're, you have a, I know you like Charlie really, but have you ever considered that the, actually, I'm going to delete that comment. Sorry, just one moment. I'm going to have to delete that comment. Okay. 
now. Okay, so that's uh, that's out of order. That's out of order. Um, this I won't I won't name the person who who did this, but, but basically, all right. Um, Charlie Veach. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be nasty to him like that. I'm not gonna be that vicious. That what that person said was really quite vicious. Now Charlie Veach. As you know, it's, it's interestingly, it's, a, it's about the 10-year anniversary of his big turnaround on 9-11. Do you remember his Damien Rockefeller moment? Um, it was on that ridiculous, that ridiculous TV channel, um, that ridiculous TV station by Off the Fence Productions. They did this thing called um, the 9-11 Conspiracy Road Trip. And that was broadcast on Channel 4, and Charlie was on there. Um, Interesting. I was asked a bit. There was a follow-up series. There was a three-episode follow-up series, and they asked me to be on it. And which is where they were, were going to do. They were going to do the seven-seven bombings and UFOs and one other thing. I can't remember what that was. Um, they said, "Oh, Ben, you." They wrote to me. Said, "Ben, we really would like you to be on this program." I said, "No, thank you." <laughs> and I'm very glad I did it. I'm bloody glad too. Very, very glad indeed. Um, it was a bloody shitty program. It really wasn't the one. Well, anyway, you know the story. It's 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 ancient history now, but. I've always, as I say in my Charlie Veach's back video, I've always seen Charlie as genuinely, genuinely a, um, a principled, decent guy who simply cannot, he's simply fallen into the old trap of the ego. Um, it's pretty obvious he does have an ego problem, as I say in the video, and someone with an ego problem can very easily be persuaded to do things by others. All they do is they simply feed the ego. Um... And I must say, uh, people come coming to me saying, no, no, you, you, you misjudged him. He's a liar. He's a, he's, a, he's a nasty piece of work. And I must say, um, over the last year, his behavior indicates that perhaps, perhaps he is. I mean, <laughs> think, think about Charlie. Um, you know, his, what happens is Charlie's textbook thing, right, his, his standard thing, the thing, but it basically at the moment his videos consist of just basically walking vlogs around Greater Manchester where he lives. And he's, he just wanders around trying to find interesting things to film. He can't go anywhere further because of the lockdown, although he's taken a few trips to other areas. Um, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, his, his standard, he goes looking for good, interesting material for people to watch. And of course, his his modus operandi, his his uh, <coughs> his classic kind of speciality, is getting get, getting into confrontations with the police and security guards. Basically, they come up to him and tell him. Usually, it's please stop filming or something. And they'll say, "Oh, excuse me, this is a public street, and I'm within my rights to film." And they'll say, "No, you're not, sir. Please put the camera away." This is, he'll say, "Yes, I am. I I can film if I want." And this goes on and on. And it's it's quite good fun because Charlie can Charlie can whine. Charlie basically is within his rights and he knows it. And very often it's the police officer or security guard who doesn't know it. The problem is, and I think this is this is the reason Charlie's style has changed considerably over the last year. And the reason for that is, and, and I've, I've seen it in a couple of his videos. He goes up to the police and security, and they they don't take the bait anymore. You know, they, I think they're getting used to him. I think word has got round and they, they know him now. Too many of them know him. I mean, just a couple of, just last week, he went to a, a scene of a, a stabbing or a shooting at a street in Greater Manchester. And he was like, he was, he was being as provocative as he could, you know, walking right up to the police ribbon, pointing the cameras at the forensics team, saying, look at that lady there, she's wearing that boiler suit, that's forensic officers. And she was just longing, he was just longing for one of them to come up and challenge him. And the police, they looked at him, they just did their job and they ignored him. And I've seen that more and more. Um, so this has led Charlie, I think, to do something which I, I really consider quite unpleasant. He's, he's changed his tactics. What he does, what he's been doing... He's been sticking his. He's been going up to members of the public. He's been sticking his camera in the faces of members, just members of the public walking past, and waiting for them to respond. If he thinks he's going to get a rise out of someone, if he thinks that a kind of person who will react angrily, he'll go up just to someone in the street and do it. And that's 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 nasty. That he's he's stooping to a very very low level to get cheap laughs for his channel. I mean. It was just indicate, and, and he's been he can be really nasty to some of them. He went up to a TV to a TV crew um, who were just filming a TV series and they were and they were saying could you stop filming he's right in there where their tent was where they had their gallery and he's sticking his camera in everyone's faces and he says could you please stop filming he's just sort of and he's going fuck off and he's been rude shouting abusive at them also to, so, so you stick take a step back social distance wear a mask and all these other things which he himself 
challenges and fights back against. So yeah, I don't like I don't like the new Charlie very much. I think he's he's a pretty yeah he's a pretty two faced and unpleasant character. Anyway, let's move on from that. Bedouin forty. Oh, there's another old one. This is from this is from yeah um, this is from 2014. Suzanne Boyd says, only seven years late to this video, but three years early for the next. Oh yeah, of course it'll be the fiftieth soon, won't it? Love Richard D. Hall's work on this incident. I'm genuinely fascinated, and my husband and I would love to come and visit the site. We're in the northeast of England. Witness this incredible in Richard's documentary, An Earthquake Above Ground. Seriously, think we believe that? The powers that be need to try harder. I hope the truth out is out in our lifetime. Oh, you're getting a love heart for that, Suzanne, and you're absolutely right. You know, by the way, if you're in the northeast of England, join Truth Seekers Northeast. They're based in Newcastle. They're a really, really good, good group, and I, I regularly speak at their... I regularly speak at their events. Um, yeah, Richard D. Hall's Berwin, the Berwin Mountains Instant documentary is very good. It's the best thing ever made on this on this particular event, definitely. Um, yeah, the the witnesses and the the research Richard does. He's helped by Scott Felton. Very very good stuff indeed. Um, and of course, it will be better when fifty in twenty twenty four. I don't know what I'm going to do then. Uh, the, will the truth be out in our lifetime? Well. I've just made a video about that, UFO Disclosure 2021, and my late, latest in the series, so check that out. Um, reply to comments 39, Cosmic Claire. Uh, hello, Claire, how are you? Another marathon, I wish I had your stamina, Ben. <laughs> well, it, they are getting shorter, aren't they, though, Claire? You know, they, they, this, is, this one will probably be, the last one was about four hours, this one will probably be the same. Um, and Charles on Lee said, that's what Rin said. <laughs> Rin. <laughs> Agent Rin, eh, Charles? <laughs> she's got a lot of stamina. She was trained in the art of, of subversion, so, yeah. yeah. She's the perfect honey trap, you know. So, yes, she's got plenty of stamina. And we have a thread on Reply to Comments 39. <clears throat> uh, Gary Robinson says, Ben, mate, some important lockdown news from this side of the pond. Texas has just removed the, has just removed the legal requirement for people to wear masks in public and in stores, etc. Let's hope the UK is next. Oh, Gary, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, that's brilliant, and I hope that continues. Now, um, the the issue with the lifting of the lockdown is going to come up an awful lot on this channel in the next couple of months because the vaccine passports have been suggested. There is a bill going through Parliament now, and um, I believe me, I will be covering it. There'll be a live stream about it probably. Definitely. But yeah, I hope so, mate. I hope so. Benson Fables says, I read this somewhere too. The thing is, I never wore one, and the idea that the virus flies around in the shape of a spiky ball is absurd, along with how folk look. Um, I, no, I, I wear, as you know, I, I never wear one except in the shop. Where there's basically, where I go shopping, there's a guy literally standing by the door and he won't let you in unless you've got a mask on. But I, I wear my subversive masks that have a message on that's rebellious. You know, it's, it's fun, that. <laughs> David Smith says to Benson Fables, Well, I'm convinced next meeting I'm going to tell the doctors and nurses at work that Benson thinks the idea of face masks protecting against viruses is absurd. So you can throw, excuse me. So they can throw away years of study and work without them from now on. That, those idiots. Cheers, Benson. And Benson Fable says to Charles, to David Smith, <coughs> who's this effing divvy? Next meeting, using a mask to protect against so-called viruses is absurd and would have been absurd six months before the lockdown and will be absurd six months after the lockdown. Yeah, uh, yeah Benson... Um, I should have said this in reply to David, actually. You know, it's you can't pr pr prevent airborne viruses. I mean, no, I, I've said this before. You, I know what's necessary to prevent airborne viruses because we, we health staff are trained to use them. You probably see them on the news. You have these all over white plastic suits, gloves, Wellingtons and a mask and a, and a goggles and things like that. That's you. The idea of the piece of cloth over your face can keep a virus out. It's like putting up a chain link fence to stop mosquitoes getting in. Uh, it's it's no it's not it's just it's all part of this uh social distancing individualization kind of agenda and well, I'll say more about that in future videos Benson continues you and I will get seasonable a seasonable cell flush out excuse me <laughs> uh, generally around the winter season 
and sometimes in summer if you're eating shit food and drinking shit liquids. Richard D. Hall mentions an experiment where all 12 well fit bodied human participants took influenza A either through injections, swab up the nose and in the mouth. None were infected with any full viral symptoms with only one participating participant having mild sniffles. Once you have a cell flush, out you personally go. Viral, you don't pass on that through sneezing, common touch, etc. Unless you're directly exchanging mucus, for example. So, how? So, in your next meeting, tell your doctor and nursey friends about that. Oh, how we laughed. Oh, this is a red rag to a bull in it, David. <laughs> David Smith says, Benson has declared it based on his internet research. I'll tell them ASAP, Benson. They won't know what hit them. Cheers. Gary Robinson says, in reply to someone called Spiders, who I can't see. Maybe another one of these people who blocked me. I don't know. But, you see, if, if I'd blocked them, they wouldn't have put a post on. Gary says, unfortunately here in Mexico, there are no exemptions, and you're forced to wear them even if you're driving a car on your own. They've also banned kids from entering shops. Oh, bloody heck. That's awful, Gary. I mean, Australia's like that. You've got to wear one when you go out in the fresh air. It's nuts. Um, Benson Fables says to David Smith, Hello, internet research. I don't have a degree in that. How about specifically looking at a website that is legitimate? And after quite some years of viewing Richard D. Hall, he is trustworthy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, definitely uh, Rich Planet is, is prevents mostly good stuff. I've got my criticisms, of course, as you know, but um, you know, very minor. I guess it's not until one gets pointed in the right direction that one starts to get what's really going on here with satanic undertones but that's a conspiracy theory right why haven't you looked at the world doctors alliance website do you even care that most of those masks don't actually protect you from whatever they're being told is going around by the founder of the polymerase chain reaction test pack carrie mullins rip is on video on the internet not television Stating it doesn't tell you that you're sick. Let's have a little more internet research. Type, type, type. Ooh, look what I found. And what have we here? We have like a little... We have a... Oh, what's this? PCR is separate from that. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. Oh, this is... Um, yeah, I've seen him before. Carrie Mullins. Carrie Mullins, yeah. He's... He, make a Carrie Mullins over the PCR tests. Right, thanks. Benson Fable says, in reply to Gary Robinson, go to Mr. Astro, Mr. Astro Theology here on YouTube and see in Mexico that mask wearing is limited in some places and not wearing them at all. Mr. Astro Theology, isn't that Santos Bonacci? Yeah, I, I know, I've met Santos. I used to like him a lot. I used to go to places to, to see him when he came over here. Oh, of course, I used to be on the CMR with him. I mean, I, I, wasn't, I was on a couple of shows with him, but he did a different show to me. We were both presenting on CMR. Um, he's gone flat, though, hasn't he? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. He's got that flat bug. Yep. In fact, he he gets he like has a go at like uh, round earth believers like me. He, he says what he calls you know he uses things like globalists and things like that and um, uh, round heads. Oh, he gets really nasty about the people like me who think the world is round. God forbid. Uh, David Smith says to Benson Fables. Satanic undertones, They'll, that'll get them to listen, Benson. Thanks very much. Now, why couldn't I think of that? Possessed by the mainstream media, I imagine. Even though I don't actually own a TV, perhaps it's the 5G controlling me. It's funny being a private, being a private clinic. I'd also accept NHS patients, patients. They're very careful about medical supplies and PPE they order. They have it in their thick heads that the masks they actually wear actually make a difference when it comes to spreading the virus. What idiots! I will link them to the YouTube video with the comments turned off, really, to corner them on the facts and evidence. Thanks again, Benson. All right, David's being sarcastic, of course. But the thing is, um, if you go into a hospital, the, the staff there don't wear these the same things you see people wearing down the shops. They wear, like, as I've just described, proper virus airborne virus protection suits. Which are like the big, you've, you've seen them, the big all over white plastic things. TK says to David Smith, well done, David, your piss taking of such, be, of such lost fools is simply fabulous. Uh, curtains don't work either, so don't bother with them. Well, you know, I mean, curtains 
are um, essentially the same thing, you know. David Smith says, in reply to Benson Fables, Benson, help! After raising my concerns, they simply referred me to this guy. Who's this? This is... Debunk the Funk with Dr. Wilson. Oh, right. Let's have a look. Oh, my God, who's this? He looks like... Oh, he looks... He's an avatar of him with, a, like, a character. He looks like the... He used to guy... He used to look like the guy who used to do the painting, you know, the, the painting programmes. The big fuzzy-haired bloke. <laughs> I can't remember his name. There's a sceptic who looks like him as well. Oh, my goodness me. Pandemic 2 debunked. Oh, my God, the worst mask experiment. Who's this? What's this? Who's this? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he actually looks like his he looks just like his avatar like his caricature <laughs> oh what's this i i was a conspiracy theorist until i became a scientist hey, dr wilson here oh, wow. so this channel in the past few weeks has hit the 1000 subscriber milestone which is more than i really could he's got been. like a massive afro he, he looks like leo sayer he looks just like <laughs> oh. Oh, all right all right all right You've got your, I've got myself a new hate watch. I'm, I'm subbing to him. He's got a thousand subs. You've got a thousand and one now, mate. I love a good hate watch. Mm. He says, I used to be deep into conspiracy theories. I never got as deep as flat earth or chemtrails, but I definitely believe nine levels of an inside job. Ancient aliens and water fluoridation. Yeah, but then that's until, you know, then I became a scientist. He's got links to the, de the demon haunted world by Carl Sagan. Oh, my goodness. All right, okay. All right, uh, David Smith. I'll, I'll, I've subbed to him, so I've got myself a hate watch. I'll just start doing reply videos to him. <laughs> he looks so funny because he's, he just, he looks just like. Well, I think he's, he's black or sort of mixed race, but he looks like that bloke who used to do the painting program. What's his name? Hang on a minute. Here we go. What's his name? Here we go. Let's, let's see. Uh, um, the joy of painting. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. What's he looks just like him. <laughs> BBC Four, The Joy of Painting. Happy Little Faces, all right. Uh, Bob Ross illustrates perfect people, peaceful painting in his own gentle, genuine style. American painter Bob Ross, that's him. Just Google him, Bob Ross, a painting program. He looks just like this. He's, got the, he's, he's a white man, but he looks just like, he looks just like this. Dr. Wilson. <laughs> All right, okay. <coughs> Enough clowning. Let's go. Let's get a move on. Um, David continues. They claim he's a doctor, but I see no proof of this, so I'm about to hit them with the truth of the earth being flat. <laughs> what do you think is the best way to go about this? Also, do you have a brother called Hedges? Oh, Hedges Fables. <laughs> is that a child? That's a children's oh, Tales from the Hedgerow or something. Is that a children's TV show about a little squirrel or something? Um... Yeah, he's being sarcastic again, of course. Well, David Smith says he wants—he thinks the Earth is flat. How do, how do you persuade this guy the Earth is flat? Well, if he's gone sceptic, very tricky. I mean, I couldn't persuade anyone the Earth is flat because I don't believe it myself. No one's ever been able to persuade, persuade me. All right, so let's, <laughs> that was a good thread. Thank you, Gary, Benson, and Wooden David, and everyone else concerned. Here we go. Reply to comments 39. The coincidence theorist. Oh, I love that name. Good on you, Ben. It's also a joy to watch you defend your reasoning and perceptions on the current madness. Thanks, thanks. Um, and uh, there, and Charles Unleash says underneath, Have, he has fun with it. Ben's a good sport. Thanks, Charles. And we go up again to... What's, oh, here's another one. Here's another comment on reply to comments 39. Charles Unleash says... A paid government agent who says stop the New World Order. That makes sense, right? Ah, well, it might, but I would say that, wouldn't I? Mm. Okay, reply to comments 39. Rob Dickerson, good day. Rob Dickerson says... Hi there, Ben. I live fairly local to Rendlesham Forest and walk my dogs through there from time to time. In November 2015, around midnight, my mate and I had a close encounter with two football-sized orbs at the north gate. They were pale yellow in colour, silent, and cast no light on the floor. As we approached them, they tugged, twigged us, getting close, and collapsed in on themselves, vanishing down to a single line of electricity, then gone. 
for the moment from the moment we got there that night to the moment we left there was stuff going on in that forest my old lurcher wasn't happy about the whole night wasn't happy the whole night barking and rearing up at stuff we could not see not at all like him my point being those airmen aren't lying they saw what they saw no doubts in my mind mate well thanks rob thanks for giving us that information on um on the the forest which is a very mysterious place and i know of course many many other people who've been in there have these kinds of encounters what you've just described is very similar to what colonel holt reports in in 1980 now there are other others have done that in fact there's a report that goes back to 1880 from the east anglia times where somebody saw one of those um in, towards the east the northeast of the forest like exactly what you describe which is very much like what colonel Holt, des Holt describes and that big book i showed you the rendlesham mystery by andrew pike it talks an awful lot excuse me <laughs> talks an awful lot about the the strange um the strange anomalies that are reported by by so many people of the kind of luminous ball type ufos that's very very common um <coughs> it's like um that what's the that's that uh, lantern marsh who, who wrote who, is it philip glass someone did a there's a place called lantern marsh but is it brian eno Bri yeah brian eno so it's a it's a album and a song by by um brian eno it's ambient music you know and it's all to do with a place called lantern marsh which is near rendlesham forest and you know what it's um it's the lantern might refer simply to these lights and they they, they used to be called willow the wisp and um they're quite and they're quite common in certain areas where there's especially near coastlines near coastal marshes salt marshes things like that wetlands <coughs> they sometimes some people blame them on on gas and things like that i mean andrew pike refers to the possibility that they may be some cause caused by burning gas or um ionizing gas in electricity electrical fields but it doesn't quite explain everything but thanks for that interesting thing charles unleashed said yeah sorry about that I went behind a tree for a piss, and, and those foot, those are the football-sized orbs you saw. <laughs> Sorry for scaring your dog. Well, one of him, one of them was his scrotum, and the other was his head. Yeah, because he had his back turned towards um, Rob. You see, so, Rob saw the back of Charles's head at night time looks like a glowing orb. <laughs> and David Splendid Isolation. Hi, David. How are you? The the area has a history of strange sightings. Correct. Rob Dickerson's sister, Charles Unleashed. The dog says he accepts your apology, Charles. So all good. Charles Unleashed says, You have a brave dog going after my clanking pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Charles Unleashed says in reply to comments 39. This is a different thread now. In fact, it's just a one-off comment. Hmm. Saying, not made by human hands doesn't mean alien, though. An automated car production line is making things not made by human hands. The recent plans for 3D printing in space is not made on Earth either, but it's still not alien. Hmm. Well, Charles, that's an interesting point. I mean, maybe I could find, maybe there's another way of saying it more specifically without loading it up with meaning that may not possibly be there. Because, you see, when you start saying, it's aliens, it's creatures from the Zeta Reticuli, first, it sounds stupid, it's bad optics, but also... It's kind of like it, you, we don't know that, you see. We don't know. When you're dealing with these things, we, we don't know that they're aliens. I mean, even in AD After Disclosure, the one of the, there's an entire segment in that book simply asking what the UFOs are. And there's lists of things such as interdimensional, interstellar, time travel. Um, there's things such as um, you know, spirits, fairies, ghosts, religious phenomenon, you know, demons, angels, things like that. There's, there's a whole list of things they could be. You know, maybe, you see, we, we say extraterrestrial hypothesis because it appears that they're, they're certainly, they don't look like something from Earth. They're not human and they're intelligent. And we, obviously, we are the only species we know of on the Earth that's capable of intelligent design, or is in designing intelligent machines. So, wow. It, it just it just leaves the, you know, it's, it's, it's a reasonable assumption. However, if you're going to be properly scientific, you have to think of something else to say. And maybe you're right. Maybe we do need some new kind of terminology. Tanya Cummings says on reply to comments 39, 
Yes, Harry really did say that, Ben. Oh, it's Har Prince Harry, I think you might mean. It was ages ago when the two sons were doing a final review 20 years since Diana's death, so it must have been in 2017. A TV special from memory, that might help you find it, and I will also do a search and let me know if you find it. Oh, thanks, Tanya, because I remember you, you talking about this now. You were saying, basically, that Harry had suggested openly about that we should be suspicious about his mother's death. And I think, you know, as I said in my video on Meghan and Harry, I suspect that the the current behaviour of Prince Harry and his, his wife, especially Harry himself, may be partly to do with uh, this fact. This fact, firstly, that his, the, what happened to his mother, the fact also that his own, his own parentage obviously is not what we're led to believe. He's not Charles's son. I don't believe he's Charles's son. He's Hewitt's son. Yet, has he had, how much contact has he had with his father? I mean, he, I've heard Hewitt, Hewitt's still alive. I mean, how, what's he doing these days? Does he see his son? Does he? You know, he's got grandchildren now. I mean, you see, and of course, if they killed his mum, what's that, what's what's that going to do to him? Obviously, William and he both have the same mother; they're half brothers. But William may find it easier to integrate and put aside his concerns than Harry can. Maybe because William is a pure blood; he's a reptilian. He's a pure blood reptilian Anunnaki Windsor. Um, Harry's not. Harry's human. He has a human mother, human father. Um, here we go, right, reply to comments 39. Uh, Fascista Gen X, Fascista Gen, Gen X says, you should do the comments of the comments of the original comments, or maybe not. It's like central bank usury, you can never, ever get ahead. Oh, well, I can actually, Fascista, I can, because that's what I'm uh, doing now. I'm Fascista, are you Mussolini's daughter by any chance? Uh, fascist, that's a good name, isn't it? Yeah, Mussolini's daughter. But Fascista Mussolini. But, you know, I I do try to keep up with things. The only time I have problems in that respect is when I le let it go too long. Like, I used to do comments reply videos every two months, and they used to drag on for, like, nine hours. And, cause, and by then, I'd, I, it was harder to remember the gist of conversations and things like that. But, yeah, I mean, I'm replying to the comments on the reply video... And we'll continue to do so. So, yeah. But thanks for the comment there. Um, and thanks for following me for four years. Being subbed to me for four years. Thank you. Um, now we have TK on reply to comments 39. Ben's Logic. All right. Ben's Logic 101. Everything that does, doesn't exist does exist, but is keeps being kept secret from you. So it looks like it doesn't exist. Well, that's not true, actually. That's, that's, that's unfair, TK. That's an oversimplification of my position. I, there's lots of things that don't exist. <coughs> I think the flat earth doesn't exist. The, if, if what, it'd be more accurate to say that... I think it'd be more fair and accurate for you to say some things that appear not to exist and are told not to exist, most people think do not exist, actually do exist, but they're being kept secret from us. So it looks like it doesn't exist. Yeah, it looks like it confirms the pre, the the a priori lie. That would be a fair thing to say. That would be a fair representation of my position. But TK continues. If you don't agree with this, then it's either because you're too stupid and indoctrinated or you know it's all been kept secret and disagree to stop the truth coming out. Um, no, no, TK. Um, that That is not those... Don't, there are people like that. I will admit there are people who... If they don't, they don't agree with me. Sometimes they are too stupid and indoctrinated, and sometimes they are knowing it's kept secret and they're disagreeing to stop the truth coming out. There are certain individuals, only a handful, who I would put into the latter category because, unlike unlike some people in this movement, I don't make accusations just off the top of my head. There are many people I suspect have been government agents who I do not denounce publicly because I believe there's no evidence. There's others, such as Nick Pope, I think there's dis d distinct reason to be suspicious of. And I'm not, I don't mind saying I think Nick Pope is a, uh, basically he is being, he's, be he's basically put into the UFO community for the purposes of, of this information. Just like Richard Doty. Richard Doty confessed, Nick Pope hasn't. But apart from that, those two are very, very similar. They play a very similar role on opposite sides of the Atlantic. Um... Most people who disagree with me simply do it because 
they either they they simply have different ideas and different thoughts and they they put together a logical case very often and i am quite happy to talk to discuss that with them you yourself are one of those people uh tk continues i mean ben has even done a video about it so watch that as ben will explain himself in that video how everything that doesn't exist does exist exist blah -de blah so why are you waiting stop the new world order quick well I have done videos about it, so watch that, yeah. I sometimes say, look, if you're saying that I won't answer you directly in every single video, every single point you make, I'll simply refer you to another video. That's not because I'm trying to fob you off. That's simply because I'm saying to you, um, I've already covered this subject in detail. I could repeat myself for an hour, like I do in this hour-long video, or I could simply, you could go and watch that video and save everyone all the time. See what I mean? TK says underneath that, uh, more Ben logic. Trump got more votes than any other president ever, and the election was rigged. Um, yeah. Well, he yes, correct. That's that's good logic, I think. So how do you know Trump got the most votes if the election was rigged? Oh, right, okay. That's a, that's a good point. Now, well, now we... I know that leaving aside, leaving aside for example, the, the hockey sticks, the, X, the F graphs... Trump got more votes. I mean, there's no doubt the turnout was so large that I think probably probably Biden probably, you know, even though Biden certainly didn't get the votes he's been said to get, probably some people actually literally did vote for Biden just because they hate Trump. And probably he did get quite a few. He probably got, um, I think, Stex Hexen Amarekna was like... Um, what did he say? He said 100... He said, he said, Stix reckon he got about 50 to 55 million votes rather than the 70 to 80 that everyone's claiming. Anyway, um, TK continues. Well, they first counted all the votes and saw Trump won by more than any other president ever, and they changed the Biden numbers. Oh, right. Yeah, well, basically, yes, that's what happened. <laughs> oh, right. <coughs> so let's believe people connected to the rigged election who confirmed Trump won with more votes than any other president ever. Well, for fuck's sake, he says at the end. Right, OK. <coughs> well, TK, there's no real contradiction there. All right, because it's true there was a massive turnout for the election. I mean, just simply the queues of people along, you know, waiting to go to the polling station were enormous, and you you can't you can't get actors to do that. Obviously, there was a massive turnout, and some people are going to vote for Biden because they hate Trump for no other reason. Probably fifty five million odd Americans did that, but um, you see, there's there's a limit to what can be covered up. You see, this is why. If they tried to rig it in 2016 and couldn't. You can't just rig an in, you can't just rig an election in the sense saying every single vote is going to be fake, because if you do that, it's too obvious. You have to tweak the totals in just the right places to do it discreetly so that no one noticed and and hope that it works. And in the case of this of the 2020 election, of course, they did a bit too much tweaking so that everyone saw the tweaking. So that's that's perfectly. Um, but so the, the people connected to the rigged election confirmed Trump won with more votes than any other president ever. Well, they, they confirmed, they said that Trump got about 70 million and Biden got about, a, he, he, Trump got about, he got about 80, 80 million or so. That's what they're claiming. It's probably, I, I, it's probably more like that Trump got about 80 million and Biden got about 55 million. So Trump easily won the popular vote. Um, okay, here we go. And we've got a long thread with a show more replies thing on it. Okay. Right. Oh, we got a long... Oh, we got a... Oh, we got the Crafty Dialist and Charles. Oh, this is going to be fun. Reply to comments 39. This is on. Hi, Crafties. How are you, darlings? Are you well? Um, oh, my God, Ben. Your face playing that I Feel Fantastic song. Literally what, what mine did. Oh, right. What's this? 743. Let's have a look. <laughs> Oh, that's that weird thing, isn't it? Oh, God, that weird, creepy robot singing, yeah. Oh, Charles Unleashed says he just realised what's living upstairs. It's only Alan above me, actually, um, the, the pianist, Liberace. Oh, thank goodness she's quiet at the moment. <clears throat> Man, it's only quarter past three in the afternoon. He's probably, I think he went out, actually. Crafty Nice says, I gave myself heartache laughing so much, Charles. That expression on his face tells a story. Try and slow it. Try. Oh, I was going like that, wasn't I? I was going I was grimacing. Trying in slow motion is even better. Ch crafty. I literally just played the video. 
the song, slow motion, fucking terrifying. Does it sound like I feel fantastic? <laughs> Charles. This is a, truly a look of horror on Ben's face, isn't it? It's just like he's realising Jigsaw was in the room with him all that time. <laughs> Crafty. I can't stop watching it. Confusion, disbelief, terror, all in one look. A facial expression says a thousand words. Charles. It, it really deserves his own video with the creepy track from The Omen. Oh, yeah. Oh, the theme music's great to that. Yeah, Avi Satani. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Crafty's on it. Oh, oh, right, they made a video, Jack. Crafty Nihilist made a video with me in it, yeah. You beautiful person, says Charles. Ben's terror. Yeah, oh, right, um, I've seen this already, but it's so it's so cool. you got a Crafty's channel right now. They've got um, a video. Where is it? Oh, they've done a few more live streams. Um, oh, they've got that. that they Funny enough, they've got a video with that bloke. The fuzzy-haired guy does the painting. Oh, where is it? There's one called... I can't see it. I can't... Oh, The Terror of Ben. This is it, yeah. Oh, there's the spiders. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, do go to the channel and watch it. They put, a, they put this on there. <laughs> oh, I'll... I'll this is I won't read the rest of this out, this thread, but it's basically um they keep talking, they keep laughing at me doing these things. So thanks I've got to say thank you to Crafty Nice for making that video. It was it's really creepy that robot thing. It really did it really freaked me out a little bit. Ah Steve Mumbling Steve Mumbling is here. Replied to comments thirty nine at forty one thirty five. You look and sound like you're having a heart attack. You shouldn't have stopped the video at Venezuela. You said yourself the video was short enough to allow the point to be made. Why stop the video there? What's up, Ben? Has it finally dawned on you that Trump was full of shit and you can't handle the truth? What's this, essentially? All right, let's have a look. Just to remind myself what he's talking about. What they mean by that? Mm. That Dominion was created in Venezuela to rig elections for that country's late president. So, um, so Steve, you must realise that simply Dominion launching a lawsuit against Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani does not automatically prove that what they said was incorrect. Yeah, all right. Well, I, I, I said what I need to say there, didn't I? It's got nothing to do with Venezuela specifically, except that... Um, of course, I mean, it could be, like I said before, it's what Dominion are doing is probably simply a counter lawsuit. It may be it's a standard tactic in in uh, uh, civil courts in the United States. No, it's we don't know. The fact that they've launched a lawsuit against Sidney Powell doesn't mean that Sidney Powell's lying. Charles says uh, either that was a jump cut or the fastest bathroom break in history. <laughs> oh, God. I honestly I didn't cut it at that point. I really didn't. Oh, we've got a thread with the Show More Replies tab. What have we here? Right. Oh, Charles Scott's back. Great. Steve Mumbling and Charles Scott. Strap yourself in, guys. Reply to comments 39. Oh, by the way, my new Nexus arrived today. It's the, the latest one, which is nice. Hmm. Charles Scott is obviously a rambling lunatic. I hope you got someone competent to check his mathematical rebuttal before you published it in UFO Truth. PMSL magazine. Uh, yes, I did. Well, I actually watched um, Philip Mason and his uh, his analysis before I before I sent it to uh, UFO Truth. Um, as you know, uh, I think I covered that. No, did, did I cover? Oh, it's. Um, I'll, I'll say. I'll bring it up in a, a video. At the moment, it's in the article. Philip Mason, of course, is Thunderfoot, and he did a couple of videos about this. And he used. Funnily enough, he used the same formulae as Charles Scott and came up with completely different results. Not Charles Scott, um, Mick West. He used the same formula as Mick West and came up with completely different results. Which says an awful lot about the... Uh, what I think that proves Charles Scott's point about it not being very, very precise as a method. Hmm. If, as I strongly suspect, it's gibberish, you'll be torn to pieces. Well, Steve... Why don't you buy a copy of it and then make a re make a video about it? You may have already done that. Let's have a look. Has Steve Mumbling made a re comment about this? Because then we can have a discussion, can't we? Oh. 
No, he hasn't made a video for over... Let's have a look. Reply to comments a Damsky video only. Ian R. Crane. You made a video about Ian R. Crane. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to watch that. Oh, no. So, we'll see. We'll see. But honestly, um, feel free to get a copy of the magazine, go through the article and see where I went wrong. Any credibility you or the magazine in question currently have will be in tatters. Well, no. Now, Jack Gary, the editor, right, he's, he's very often sent back drafts for me to correct because he won't publish them because he, because I, because he says they're not good enough. He's done that a couple of times. So what's the problem? Charles Only says in reply to that, I'd very much like to show Charles Scott the memorial at Logan's Airport for all the staff who died in the attacks and introduced him to their surviving colleagues. 9-11 happened exactly as the coverage presented it. Nothing to do with death rays from space. Um, well, that's another subject, Charles. That's 9-11. Now, what you're referring to here was actually done with the... Um, it was with the that BBC thing, the, the off-the-fence thing with Charlie Veach. Uh, I personally see, I mean, I don't know what Charles's opinion on this. I personally have absolutely no doubt that the the Logan Airport Memorial and for the people who died, they actually did die. I've got absolutely no doubt about that. The question is, did they die the way we've been told? And I know you and Steve think, yes, they did. They, they, the official's always correct. I don't. <clears throat> um, as for death rays from space, I don't think death rays from space had anything to do with 9-11. I mean, this... Dr. Judy Wood doesn't refer to death rays from space at any point, or Star Trek weaponry, or anything, any of the other various descriptions that have been used to talk about her, her science, her discoveries. Um, but uh, there, you are, there you are, her evidence. Steve Mumling says to Charles, Of course it did. Why these conspiracy clowns keep telling the world it can be anything and everything other than the truth is beyond me. Well, you see, Steve, as I said in my reply video to you, I think the truth is on the other side. Charles Scott says, Apart from the fact I have achieved the highest grade possible in A-level mathematics, and that you have demonstrated that you don't understand the concept of mathematics, your comment is, worth, is not worthy of consideration. As you've proven me, you are so illogical that you are essentially crackpot based on several of your historical comments. I won't waste my time pursuing a conversation with a crackpot. I'll let you continue your own little deluded fantasy world spouting your drivel fiction narrative. Oh, well, well Charles, to, to be fair, that's rhetoric. I mean, I honestly, my own, the way I do it is to actually take on their points they make. You know, I know, I know you what you think of them, and I, I'm, I don't dispute what you're saying. I mean, what, uh, what you said, especially when I read, uh, f you know, Philip Mason's analysis and how different he, the different idea, the different measurements he got from Mick West's, I think, um, I think it proves your point, I reckon. Charles Scott says to Charles Unleashed, I never said death ray from space. Ah, yeah. That's it. Then Dr. G. Wood didn't either. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, now, <coughs> this often um, disagreement on 9-11. Um, oh, it's, it's Dr. Judy Wood. Um, oh, sorry. It's uh, Richard D. Hall and Andrew Johnson again talking about David Icke. <coughs> Airplanes and demolition don't turn solids falling under gravity into dust before hitting the ground. Correct. Uh, nor produce height with volume to qualify the dust characteristics of 9-11. I know why you will disagree with my comment, because you're a crackpot. I won't pursue this conversation, waste my time, blah blah blah, blah fiction narrative. Um, absolutely, you, Charles. I mean, Richard and Andrew, I mean, they make, in that video about David Icke, they get a lot of things wrong about David. But one of the things I'm totally in agreement with that is that Dave, David Icke will not... David Icke made this comment about 9-11 where he says, it doesn't matter whether you believe it's thermite or whether you think it was Dr. Judy Wood's um, directed energy weapon. It doesn't matter. All we have to agree on is that, is that the official story is false. Apart from that, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. Because, you know, we have to, if we're going to say that the, the official story 9-11 is false, the first question that's going to come about is, well, what, well, what happened then? If it wasn't planes hitting buildings and fires, what did happen? If it wasn't 19 guys with box cutters or some other kind of cut, cutlery or whatever it was, what did happen? We have to have an answer for that. We have to have an alternative hypothesis. And when, we, when, when people look at this and they say, oh, actually, we've got two hypotheses here. 
uh, one of them's one side of the 9-11 treatment says the other is wrong. Um, it could be it's thermite is the most is thermite is the one we're going to go for because that's what all the others go for. The thing is though, when when they find out the thermite story is a load of crap, what are they going to think? They may well turn back to the official story and think, well, obviously the official story is right after all. In fact, I've I've seen people talking like this. I've seen people talking. I've seen people who call themselves ex 911 truthers. Mick, Mick West has interviewed these people who say, well, you know, I suddenly realised there was all this thermite stuff. It just didn't make any sense. So, well, obviously it, it was the hijackers and the planes and fires. You see, the whole thermite story is designed to confuse and distract. And in the end, it, it sends, its purpose is to turn people around and send them back to the official story. And so David Icke is absolutely wrong to, to say what he did. TK says, the readership are all about credibility. All right. David, I don't know what that's in context to. David Smith says to Charles Scott, <clears throat> these seven experts prove this UFO video is alien. Also, Charles Scott, these 3,000 NIST experts are worthless. Or oh, David, life is not an election. I don't think this is, this is not about totting up simply numbers of people. I mean, the whole thing about climate change, this has come up again and again and again. It's about, it's about the quality of the information being provided and the environment in which the science is done. Is the, quality, is the, is the, is the evidence correct, first of all? Has it been produced in, 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 in an intellectual environment where people are free to discover, discover the evidence where the, where the, discover the science which the evidence leads to? Or are there political concerns? Are there economic and political concerns? Uh, forces at work within that intellectual environment. Simply saying seven versus three thousand, is it's. I don't think that's uh, that's what what argument ad popularium. I think the uh, the skeptics say oh, appeal to authority. That's what the skeptics say. Charles Scott says to David Smith. Apart from you randomly plucking out of thin air the number seven and three thousand. And that your comment doesn't, or 3,000 plus, sorry. And not that your comment doesn't reflect what I've said, as you are a crackpot. It does not surprise me that your comment is worthless dross and does not invalidate evidence of extraterrestrial visualization to Earth or 9-11 was done, or 9-11 being done by unconventional means. Crackpot, fantasy world, fiction narrative, etc. TK says to, oh, at YouTube, you can tell David Smith how to use com um, YouTube comments, please. I think he's got himself lost in translation. Well, TK, what's the problem? I mean, David Smith seems to be perfectly... Oh, um... Where is David Smith? Oh, David Smith seems to know how to use the comments. Okay, what do you mean? Charles Unleashed says to Charles Scott, I just got the notification of your response last week, and I'm disgusted. This isn't Charles speaking now, it's Dale Elliott from Massachusetts speaking and someone who knows people who were involved. And Ben, you will have to allow me this. Of course, yes. Go ahead. Uh, you are frankly lying when you claim you have researched 9-11 because if you had, you would be perfectly aware that the towers were designed to withstand impacts from a light aircraft with no fuel, not a fully loaded jumbo jet, not a fully fueled jumbo jet. The towers were more than 80% space and air. A memorial at Logan has a piece of debris less than 12 inches thick, representing eight floors. For you to call the victims crackpots and the real fiction is beyond deplorable. You, Charles Scott, are a piece of trash who doesn't deserve to breathe the same air as decent people. You ought to be taken out of society and given treatment. Did, did Charles Scott actually say that about witnesses? <clears throat> um... I think Charles was addressing David Smith. Is David Smith a witness? I mean, also, um, I, I wouldn't go up to somebody like who who said they saw what they saw in nine eleven and say they're lying. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't call some. I wouldn't call someone a crackpot um, if what I thought. If I thought they were telling the truth, and most of the people in nine eleven were, they described what they saw. As for the real event being fiction, well. I'm, af I'm afraid what ha what actually happened, what actually, obviously something happened. T t two towers were destroyed, some planes, some planes took off and they never landed again. We know that. Four planes took off and never landed. One crashed, the others we don't know. We, we, the others I'm not sure where they are. 
and everybody on board i don't know where they are but we do we we, we do no favors to anybody we don't show respect to the people who lost their lives nor do we show sensitivity to their loved ones if we propagate a, f a false story about what happened to them it's like it's like if you see an old lady getting beaten up in the street and someone nicks her handbag and they kick her to death you know it's it's not respectful to her memory nor sensitive to her loved ones to tell the police oh uh, she got hit by a car no you tell them what happened that's 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 what you do you say no no these people attacked her they stole a handbag and they kicked her till she died that's what you do that's showing respect that's being sensitive that's being sensitive so i don't i mean if if charles i wouldn't if charles said that somebody just randomly talking about 9 was a crackpot then that's not fair unless they're actually lying and and i've so far i i mean People talk about various uh, individuals within within the 9/11 world about who might be telling the truth, who isn't. I don't know. All I know, all I go with, is the information. <clears throat> um, Charles only says to Steve, mumbling, "You'll have to take it from here, Steve, with C. Scott. I'm done with this piece of human waste." David Smith says to Charles Unleashed, <coughs> "Stop attacking beliefs with evidence, Charles. It's unfair." Uh, so David Smith says to Charles Scott. Seven being the number of experts on the George Adamski video you keep pushing. Three thousand being the rough number of scientists involved in this. I like how you can dismiss experts in one way, then hold them up in another when it fits your preconceived beliefs. Very honest of you. Shows your integrity. And doesn't smack of cherry picking. Appeals to authority, fallacies and all. Well, as I said before, I mean, I don't... I haven't studied the Adamski thing in, in detail... I mean, this is Charles' speciality, Gerard Arza, a guy I, I interviewed once. He talked about that too. I've sort of let you guys and Charles Scott get, you know, hash it out amongst yourselves. But if Charles is obviously Charles can't use that, you know, election theory any more than Charles Unleashed can, or or David Smith can, or or Steve Mumbling can. If you obviously like if. 3,000 people say photographs are fake and seven say they're not. Or 3,000 people say photographs are real and seven are not. It doesn't mean the photos are real. It is an appeal to authority as well, so I see what you mean. But again, reality or non-reality of photo photography is a different thing altogether. It's, it's, difficult to, it's difficult to know. All right, so reply to comments 39. <clears throat> Crafty Nice says, Can we please ban people called Charles talking to people called Charles? I'm getting confused. <laughs> it's Charles Unleashed, Charles Scott. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought I was calling him Scott and Unleashed just for short, but I just say Charles Scott, Charles Unleashed. Yeah. And Charles Unleashed says, how do you think I feel with all these clones escaping from the lab? Yeah, which is the real Charles Unleashed, that's the thing. Uh, and she, she Crafty calls him Charles the Ninth. And Charles says, it's the testosterone that does it. And one of the scientists split, split plant growth food in the solution. So they pop up quicker than we can pull the plug. <laughs> Crafty, it's more terrifying than that bloody song. Hmm. 39, Char reply to comments 39, Charles Unleashed, Douglas Dietrich, Ben, he claims Hitler was his father, oh right, yeah, I was wondering who you meant, and then of course it was Douglas Dietrich I was trying to think of, but I didn't know he claimed Hitler was his father, um, because, I don't know, um, but he says a lot of weird stuff, I mean, Dietrich, Dietrich, um, well, he, I saw him doing an interview with, um, who was it, I think it was, the, it was this, uh, on YouTube, it was a ufologist, I can't remember who it was. But he was going on and on about Roswell and Area 51, right? And he just does this gish gap, gallop of information. It was the Japanese, it was the Russians. They had clones, they had balloons, they had this, they had that and the other. And it's like, literally, he reels off a whole load of of assertions, literally within like a, three or four sentences. David Weiss did this to me as well. Now, he's the guy I interviewed about the Flat Earth. Um... He again, it's difficult. To, like, I, I, I let, I brought him on the show, and I was, 
allowed him to have his say politely. But it's difficult to dispute every single thing, every claim he made. It was really difficult because he gish gallops the whole thing. And Dietrich does the same. Oh, that's one hour up already. Cool, right. Well, we shall take a little break now. And, well, I will. You don't have to. And we'll be back very shortly. OK, we're back. So um, let's continue with Reply to Comments 39 again. And the big Scottish midgey. <clears> hmm. <throat> Here we go. I'll read more. Uh, you just said there needs to be evidence concerning Parks and Ward being shills. But where is their evidence? They constantly tell absolute lies. They are pushing information to large numbers of people who desperately need hope. Um, this, to me, is sick. You need to watch more of their videos, Ben, particularly Ward's. His following is over 100,000. It's a slick setup, which, again, sets alarms off. It will undoubtedly open your eyes. Parks whom I've watched for many years, is simply a conspiracy regurgitation specialist who must make a tidy penny from his CC cult and has now jumped on the band Trump Q bandwagon, which has expanded his reach to another audience. Right, uh, Charlie Ward I don't know very much about, um, except I know a lot of people don't trust him, a lot of people think he's a bit dodgy. As I said, um, and the same goes for Simon Parks with this. I, I mean, I know Simon Parks a lot better. I've studied him a lot further, and I think... Um, Thing is, a lot of, I mean, a lot of what he actually says about Q is true. I, I, I know you're not going to like me when saying that, but it is the Trump Q thing. A lot of it is actually correct, and I have made videos explaining why. But as as is always the case, we need some kind of due process if we're going to to do to deal with this sort of thing. We need some kind of due process. Um, I would say, like, because there's lots of videos. There's been several videos like Charlie Ward exposed or the truth about Charlie Ward or same with Simon Parks. But I mean, they get ridiculous. They get to ridiculous levels where, as you saw last year with well, sorry, in 2018, with the massive um, hate campaign was launched by a person against a number of people. Um, myself, Miles and Simon were the main targets, but there were many others. Uh, there was um, Kerry Cassidy, etc., also targeted by this person. Um, this ordeal by hashtag, this kind of internet lynch mob mentality, is is not in the long run going to help us. If you believe what you do, and you may be right, you have to support the idea of a shield tribunal. What I discussed in I did a video, I, in fact I did an update video, didn't I? Um, I think it was I mentioned it in my Caroline Stevens video. <clears throat> so that I think is the solution. I mean, I do agree with there's some there's some dodgy thing. Simon, I wouldn't. Simon, I think seems sincere, and I mean, I don't, I can't see anything wrong with Simon Parks, to be honest. Um, the all the the evidence I've seen about Simon Parks being, you know, being a fraud of some kind, don't hold water. Charlie Ward, who I don't, I, you're right. I do need maybe I do need to watch more of his stuff. Fair enough, but um, I don't. Um, I do understand that if someone like, for example, has a hundred thousand subs and they've just set up, yeah, that's a bit that's a bit odd. I don't get that. Charlie Ward also says some crazy things sometimes. I mean, I think are absurd. So, things that such as oh, Biden is what is it? Biden is one of the white hats, and it's all you know. It's being Biden is all part of the plan and things like that. No, he's not. It's not. Biden is a globalist. Basically, what he's a walking corpse who's basically been reanimated by the globalists to. to to get rid of Trump and try and get back control of the United States. He's not part of the plan. But Ward says this, and I mean, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. I mean, that interview, I think he did with Sasha Stone, where he was just, the things he said were just like, oh, he said stuff like, yeah, it's, it's, there's going to, oh, he said something about having like a um, dual power with Biden and Trump or something like that. I'm like, what? I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was an absurd interview. It was ridiculous. Okay, um, reply to comments 39, Charles Scott says, um, let's have a look, oh this I think is all arguments, opinions and points made by David Smith, Charles Unley, Steve Bumbling and anyone else are irrelevant worthless drafts regarding inf the information in, and I think these are the, what are these, oh it's the Adamski thing again, and this is, is this your Facebook group about the yeah, this is a, this is oh, this is Charles's Facebook group where he talks about oh, he's got some things about Steve mumbling here uh, and this George Adamski, right? Okay, um, 
Well, I think uh, whether something's worthless dross or not can be worked out through argumentation, and you've been you've done quite a good job so far. I'm um, Steve Bumbling has made a good uh, an attempt, a hearty attempt to dis- dismiss, especially what you say about Roswell. I don't know about Adamski specifically, but um, I think you know. Obviously, you can sort this out with logic, can't you? Um, it is irrelevant if Adamski was a liar. Why did the object land on the ground? Whether it's subjective intuition or analysis. Um, um, worth Stross, etc. If you're viewing a copy of the original 8mm film, which could be tampered with and less clear, anybody who thinks their opinion it supersedes over 50 years of film analysis. Oh, I think you've talked about this before, Charles. I think um, it's quite a long comment here. And. I think you've made this point before about how you believe that the original 8mm film for George Adamski is correct. Um, and I, do, I know you've been saying this for a certain while. I won't read all this out here, but, you know, I that's fair enough. I mean, you you put forward a proposition. Steve Mumbling, of course, and Charles can refute it if you want. But I don't think Charles Scott... I don't think Charles unleashed a speaking to you anymore, but anyway... Um, but Steve Bumling says, Charles Scott is very obviously a rambling lunatic QED. The film experts never said it was alien QED. Um, Charles Scott then says, oh, he just says about things being a fantasy and a crackpot fiction narrative, etc. Okay. Well, Charles, I mean, why don't you like, a, I, honestly, you and Steve, I say this to both of you. Stick to the points. Stick to the logical points. You know, forget the rhetoric. Forget the the adjectives. Stick to the points. Because you you both over you you both here are overusing rhetoric. I would say. <clears throat> Stick to the. I mean, I do this. I try to do this with Steve. It's quite and I can have quite good fun with him. Steve Bumbling says in reply to comments thirty nine, "It's just occurred to me, Ben's startled reaction to the lawsuits being brought against Sidney Powell and Co. All right, it's, and he gives me a, it's forty one thirty five again, so it's that that bit about Venezuela and stuff like that. Might be because he's been repeating their rubbish as truth on global social media platforms. All oh, right, so now am I going to get sued as well, Steve? Am I? Mm. Bring it on, Dominion. Yes. <laughs> I never watched any of his Trump rubbish, but it's very easy to imagine what he said. He might be expecting to hear that from the voting machine company's lawyers. Ah, oh, yes, they may, they may come after me too. Well, yeah, I mean, I well, if you haven't watched any of it, how do you know it's rubbish? First of all, secondly, be feel free to check out what I've said. I mean, I did these alt tech exclusives because basically YouTube have banned me from saying this now. So I can't, I can't say what, everything I wanted to say, so I put it on as alt-tech exclusives. But, I mean, yeah, I stand by what I said in those. If I'm wrong, then, you know, feel free to engage me in debate, which you have done. I've, you, you have engaged me in debate. I've engaged back. And um, that's how things are sorted out. BZ Garson says he was actually starting to hyperventilate. Yeah, I was actually... Yeah, well, I was puffing a bit in that bit. I don't know why that is, but I was actually, I was like that. Maybe I, maybe I just come back from a, I don't know. Maybe I've gone for a, a little walk or something. Maybe I'd run up the stairs to the toilet. I don't know. Charles Unleash says to BZ Garson, the singing robot was outside his door. Oh God, that bloody robot! That's giving me nightmares. I'll tell you. Honestly, it's a horrible thing. That is. Right, um, reply to comments 39, Steve Mumbling says, and he's got a YouTube link here. Let's have a look. What is this? What is this? Okay. Well, hello again. Ah, it's now, uh, a couple of members. Compelling George Adamski UFO videos, PMSL. All right, well, Steve, um, this is not really my particular field of expertise it's more something like with charles scott maybe charles scott can put his own views i mean i expect charles scott has replied on your video let's have a look i mean i won't read out any comments because this is this is my comments reply video not yours but let's have a look charles unleashed has charles scott said anything he has oh right now charles funny enough charles scott says says some of my comments are getting blocked on your channel 
I've taken the li liberty to screenshot all comments display just in case we have a m have the mumbler deleted comments PMSL. Um, well, um, Charles, I I don't think I mean I don't know whether Steve mumbling is deleting your comments or not, but I don't think he would do that. He's never deleted any of mine. It's probably more likely that as that I've found with my channel, indeed you you and Charles Unleashed have been emailing me about this that uh, they just go into the spam folder every so every so often usually sometimes it's only, I'm doing other things it's only when you remind me that I uh, I go back and I um, I actually do liberate those comments so maybe instead of saying it's, it's, without don't accuse Steve mumbling just ask him to check his spam folder <coughs> and see if they're there but I mean I'm glad you saved them and anyway, saving them screen taking screenshots and saving them are a good idea I noticed you've been doing that, and you've been putting putting them on your Facebook page. I've got to get you. Hang on, let me just uh, friend you. Send you a friendy on Facebook. Hang on. Let's just see. I'll send you a friendy. Oh, it's all oh, right. It, 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 right. What's it? The content on your profile is public. Okay. Exit view as. What's that mean? All oh, right, I, I can't. There's no. There's no friend button. I don't know how to do that. Anyway, um, you got my email. Anyway, right. We have on get a job. You lazy scroungers part two. Saltney seventeen says ten years old and still applicable. Well, thanks, mate. Thank you, Saltney. I actually, it is kind of. I mean, if I remember rightly, what was in it. That was a long time ago. But oh yeah, um, the the casualization of things like that that I talk about is is still very real. Yes. And we have a thread here. And it is Crafty Nice and Charles Unleashed. We're going to have a bit more banter here <clears throat> on Reply to Comments 39. I have to admit, I love Steve mumbling. All right, Crafty, I'm glad somebody does. Uh, listening to your comments, reply videos without him would be like watching Sherlock Holmes without Moriarty. Even a cheese and pickle sandwich could work it out. Comedy gold, ha, ha, ha. You know, crafty. I have to agree. Yes, I mean, basically, it's it's a bit like Sargon of Akkad and Jess Phillips. I mean, they it's a kind of love hate relationship, or in the it's kind of like it's symbiotic, shall we say? Um, he provides he does provide me an awful lot of great content. I mean, his his kind of his 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 videos. I've made reply videos to him, things like that. He's made reply videos to me. Basically, we both gain. An awful lot out of this very conflicting relationship we have. So yeah, I mean, with, I would be. It would be a shame actually without if we didn't have Steve mumbling. It would. I would miss him if he decided to stop posting and stop uploading. <clears throat> Charles Unleashed says, "Where would we be without those Steveisms? It'd be a much darker place without absolute rubbish, drivel, piffle, peddlers, sprukers. And don't forget, it's a steaming pile." I'm thinking of getting t-shirts done with those on. Steve Bumbling says, When the end of civilization happens and the galaxy implodes on itself, there will be Steve and Ben going at it until the pits are end. Yes, I think we will, Charles, yeah. <laughs> Crafty Nihilus says, hmm. I've uh, got a sneaky ch she says, I've got a sneaky suspicion that their warring banter may be the actual reason the galaxy decides to, decides to give up the ghosts. Ben, can't you see? It's the end of the galaxy, Steve. Steve, what absolute drivel! Even a cold bowl of soup can see that is complete piffle. The galaxy, hold my pint. <laughs> oh yeah, Charles unleashed. It's the force in balance. It has a light side and a dark side that binds the universe together. Maybe we all be covered in absolute rubbish. <laughs> Crafty Nice says they're quantum entangled. When Ben's op when Ben opens his mouth to speak, Steve has a sudden impulse to hit something hard. He has no idea why. Oh yes, it's usually the wall of his house, luckily, because we live on the other side of the world. Charles says to Crafty, usually this thing when he falls about laughing. He came, he saw, he beheld all those mighty works of Ben told from ages past, and he declareth absolute rubbish. <laughs> 
Crafty. And now I'm imagining the greatest story ever told. Not sure if Ben or Steve is Charlton Heston at this point. Oh, he's like, uh, oh, I'd be the... Um, that's the Jesus one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Charlton Heston wasn't Jesus, was he? It was that... Oh, who was it? Not Max von Sydow. He was... Who was he? You know? Yeah, it was Max von Sydow, wasn't it? Charles Unleashed Sister Crafty. That was James Coburn in The Greatest Story Ever Told. Good old Chuck was in The Ten Commandments. All oh, right, that's right. Okay, that's it. Mm. They made some good biblical film adaptations, actually, the um, Hollywood in like the 50s and 60s. They really did some good ones. Um, Crafty says, nope, Mandela Effect. He was John the Baptist, actually. All oh, right, yeah. That's another one to add to the list. Charles says... I'll have to step into the jump room for that one. Don't remember Mandela ever being John the Baptist. Crafty, what dimension are you, Ashley and Charles? Come back to this one and we'll talk, Ch Charles. Trying to get my bearings. Looks like 1970s disco. Very nice dimension, this one. Oh, yeah, all those mini skirts, Charles. Yeah. Crafty, I'm currently in a world where every time Ben has a Boudicca moment, Greta Bumbag punches herself in the... <laughs> Greta Bumbag... Punches herself in the face. I'm staying here. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you have a Boudicca moment? Uh, Charles. That's how Greta got into that state. Crafty. Well, it wasn't evolution, that's for sure. Charles. It wasn't even you. Even, even human, that's for sure. Crafty. That's for sure. Now it's turning into a postmodern poetry. Charles. What is poetry? Anyone can crap in a paper bag, throw it on the floor and stamp on it and declare, this is art. That'll be three million bucks, please. Crafty. Was that supposed to rhyme? <laughs> oh, don't get me started on, on modern art. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Greta. Greta is a, is a damaged child. That's child abuse, what they're doing to Greta. I mean, she's like, <clears throat> you know, how dare you? She's, she's, uh, if she tops herself, right, there'll, there'll be blood on their hands the people who's put put her on this pedestal made of this figurehead at her age i don't know how old she is she's supposed to be 17 i think she's younger she looks more like about 14 or 15 um ian r crane dies crafty says bless ian we had booked tickets to go and see last year's av and cancelled cancelled due to the nonsense what such a shame we tweeted at him last year when he was speaking about his illness and he took the time to reply such a lovely man that's typical of Ian Crafty. He had time for everyone. He really did. He he had a wide circle of friends. And he, he always appreciated people like that, like you doing that. A reply to Caroline Stevens. Crafty says, right, I'm going in. Already got my boxing gloves at hand. No one disses Ben and gets, gets away with it round us. Oh, thanks, Crafty. That's much appreciated. You're, you're, you're great. You're very good. You're very, you're lovely. You both are. Um, Caroline hasn't responded to this. Um, I hoped it might. This might actually get her into get, get into some kind of dialogue. Might maybe talk her down off the ledge of stupidity which she's on. Which is a shame because I, I thought she was better than this. I thought she she has a show to seeking the truth. I thought she is is genuine. I mean, I think she is genuine, but she just doesn't understand. The reality of the situation is, like I said in my video, it's typical of someone new to the whole thing. She's kind of like, like she's lost it a bit. She really has. To spread that stupid article about me. And she didn't even, she didn't come to me and say, yeah, Ben, what's this? She just read it and thought, right, this, this article says Ben's a shill. Doesn't give any evidence. It just talks complete drivel, rants about nothing for, for 33 pages. But I'm going to block Ben... Start distributing this around to people to warn them. That's not seeking the truth, Caroline, is it? The crafty nihilist. Is Sharon a droik? Doesn't sound like an angry female to me, and I should know. Uh, droik. I, the, the style is different, crafty. Um, not like droik. I mean, droik, there's several people who are droik. Um, I really think that this is... No, um, You see, there's, I have my gang of haters, and not all of them are connected to Droik. There's about five of them in Team Droik. But, and I, I, it's hard to say, you know, to, to prove, but 
she sounds a bit different. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, Sharon Kilby is probably a pseudonym. She might be someone else, and she might not even be a she. She might be a he. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, anyway, Crafty goes on. I was ambivalent about Caroline Stevens until this video. Now I'm wondering if she's okay. She has believed this verbose rant that has obviously been penned by a troll who has an axe to grind. Dear Caroline, if you're reading this, please be more discerning in the future. Kind regards, the angry female, com female components of the crafty nihilist. <laughs> well said, Liz. I mean, honestly, Caroline, yeah, listen to what Liz has said here. Um, and that's a very good way to put it, a verbose rant penned by a troll. That's all it was. I didn't deconstruct it when it first came. When it first, I saw it when it first appeared in 2015, and I should have, I should have done a long deconstruction then and didn't. But I've done one now. Look, it's not too late. If you if you want to put if you want to put aside the bullshit and talk to me sensibly, unblock me. We'll talk to me sensibly. All you have to do is just um, just retract what you said. I don't expect you to grovel or anything like that. Just retract what you said. Explain you were wrong. And we can carry on making videos together and things like that. Dealing with the subjects that really matter. All right, we have Trump impeachment live stream. And impeachment 2 live stream. And Crafty Nihilist says, The first few minutes of this video is meshing, messing with our patience, Ben. Is it buffering? Can you hear me? Spiders buffering? Hear me? Oh, you can. What I'm buffering. Ah, good job. We love you. Thanks. Thanks, Crafty. Um, it's probably the spiders that were on your terror video you made of me. Woody Black says in reply to comments um, 39. Hi Woody, how you doing? Mm. About Tartarian mud floods, etc. All oh, right, this is what uh, Claire, Cosmic Claire was speaking about this. <clears throat> no, no, Martin Leiter nor John Levy have ever been on Joe Rogan, but the Tartaria theory is there was an there was an advanced civilization that existed before this one, and this fact has been hidden from the general public. Yeah, correct, exactly. It suggests most accepted history has in fact been fabricated, and that buildings we're told were built a hundred years or so ago weren't built at that time, but instead were dug up, having been built much earlier, and had been built in mud in a mud flood, a great reset event. Hence why many buildings appear like they've been built below ground level with windows and doors, etc. Half in the floor, in the floor. sounds legit. I want a sec, uh, Woody. Well, did you say buildings we are told were built a hundred or so years ago? Or do you mean a thousand or, t or ten thousand? Do you mean literally a hundred years ago or so? Weren't built at that time, but were dug up? Really? And this that sounds a bit far-fetched. I mean, it sounds rather like the... There's these people who, who deny there was such a thing as the Middle Ages. They said basically the Roman Empire, the Ro it was everything was much more recent. Basically, the Roman Empire was basically some appeared sometime in the 14th century, and the fall of the Roman Empire was about 1800. And then basically everything that happens between now and then, that is the medieval period, the Dark Ages, the Renaissance, Norman Conquest, all that, everything that happened then, all the kings and queens and everything like that were fabricated. And basically, the, we went straight into the Industrial Revolution. I mean, that. I looked at. I read an article about that once, and I thought, nah, it's just. Obviously, you know, it, I used to say that about Paul being dead, Paul McCartney, and I changed my mind. But from what I've seen so far, that makes no sense at all. Do you, do you mean, when you say 100 years or so, do you mean that, or did you mean a thousand years? Um. But 100 years or so ago, I mean, there's plenty of buildings that were built 100 years ago. We know who built them, where they have blueprints. There's photographs of them being constructed. I mean, you know, we've had photography now for over almost 200 years. I mean, it's, it's a far-fetched to say that that was fake. Reply to comments 39, Steve Mumbling says, The only way to terminate this nonsense is for someone to... I'm not going to read that out because that sounds a bit dodgy, Steve. What are you saying here? House if you can keep your head ads. when all about you are losing. Nearly two months since the deadly riot at the Capitol. Today, U.S. Capitol Police forces are ramping up security because of a new possible threat. A senior law enforcement official tells NBC News that the Department of Homeland Security 
and the FBI sent a joint intelligence bulletin to state and local law enforcement yesterday, warning that some extremist groups have, quote, discussed plans to take control of the U.S. Capitol and remove Democratic lawmakers on or about March 4th. OK, this is a this is a seven minute video. I don't have time to play it all, but um the thing is, Steve, they're referring here specifically to what they call white supremacists, which is basically anyone who wears a Trump hat. Um, ironically, this very day, I think it was, like, it was yesterday, actually, that I'm recording this, there was an attack on the U.S. Capitol. Um, the, the police lines were stormed. Someone drove a car into the police lines. Um, there was all kinds of... Um, all the uh, Twitterati were going nuts, the wokest on Twitter. You know, Mike Stutchbury and everyone was going, Oh, you see... Evil white supremacists attacked the Capitol. Then it was revealed that this was this person was. They haven't said what race they are, but it turns out this person is in the Nation of Islam, which probably means they're black. The Nation of Islam is a cult uh, set up by Elijah Muhammad. I think he was in the fifties. Uh, taken over by Louis Farrakhan, who's a complete and utter nutcase. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure actually if. I'm not sure whether you can call them evil or mentally ill. Actually, I mean Farrakhan is crazy. He, Farrakhan thinks Tom Jones is a black man. He's insane. Um, but anyway, this person's then attacked. They had a knife with them, apparently, and they, the police shot them. But apparently a, a, police, a police officer was killed when the car hit the police lines. So, uh, but it wasn't white, white supremacists, as they're called, at all. Um, of course, Mike Stutchbury and all the others went quiet after that, didn't they? Um, that's far more likely than him ever returning to the White House. He was impeached whilst he was still the president. Yeah, he was, he's, he was impeached while he was still the president, and uh, he was not removed, though. Charles Unleashed said, is that a job offer? <laughs> president Charles. Yeah. The thing about Charles, um, I don't, I'm not sure it worked properly. You know, when you do your address from the, from the, from the Oval Office, you know, sitting with your... Sit it with your back to the camera. I mean, it's it doesn't not very good optics that, mate, is it? Steve, do you take Bitcoin, <laughs> Charles? Yes, but I wish you told me this when he was still president. I could have changed charged double. <laughs> um, reply to comments thirty nine. Oh, hang on. Um, this what else? First of all, reply to comments thirty nine. Charles unleashed. Seeing these comments in sequence shows a clear progression of Charles Scott getting nowhere and going slowly insane because of it. All right. Um, Charles. Well, Charles seems to be focusing. Charles Scott. I did prefer it when he was talking more about like Roswell and stuff like that. He seems to be talking about um, fantasies and and drivel and narratives, fiction narratives and things. Um, and of course. The Adamski thing, I don't know much about. I, I, but if he wants to talk about it, that's absolutely fine, I think. But uh, So I can't really say whether he's going... To, I think he, he sounds perfectly cogent. He's just talking about topics that I have less than interest in. Uh, Gary Robinson says on the same video, Ben, what are you saying about... Excuse me. <gasps> what are you saying about Mexico being merged into the USA? is very unlikely to happen. After 15 years of living on the border and seeing how things work, I can confirm that the daily grind to keep Mexicans out of the USA and controls those who are able to cross illegally is, a ma is massive. There are literally hundreds of millions of people in Mexico who are not eligible to come to, to cross into the US, mainly because they live in poverty and can't provide details of their income and residence, etc. The difference between Mexican border towns and Texan border towns that sit right next to each other is huge. And I can tell you now, there is no way they'd be able to merge with Mexico without it seriously disrupting parts of the USA. So while I have no doubt that certain people in power might want this to happen, I can assure you without any doubt that the cultural differences alone will make it impossible. It would be like dropping Ethiopia in the middle of Hertfordshire and hoping for the best. <laughs> well, Gary, it appears, you know, it appears they're actually doing that. I mean, with, with these migrant boats that are coming across the channel continuously, I think dropping Ethiopia in the middle of Hertfordshire is exactly what they're doing. I mean, they've, they're, they're distributing a lot of these migrants from their hotels into small villages and things like that, rather than, rather than in cities where they're, they're used to multiculturalism more and more and more. It's as if they, they want to sort of like uh, attack the keep of the fortress, so to speak. Um, as for Mexico being merged, I mean, I, 
all right, I take your point. You actually live there, so you, you've seen it firsthand. But if it's not going to happen, then that's good. But believe me, the NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, is a proto-North American Union. It's exactly like the EEC. The EEC set up in the, in the late 60s. Britain came into it in 71, ended up having a, referent, a post hoc referendum in, in 75, 74, whenever it was. Um, it eventually, what did it turn into? To the EU, the Organization of African Unity, became the African Union. Every single state in Africa has joined it. There's no, there were no Brexiteers or equivalents in Africa. Um, NAFTA is designed to, to be like, they've even got the Amero. It's got its own currency, the hypothetical currency, the Amero. Um, I think they, 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 they're exploiting the split between, with, between Quebec and um, English-speaking Canada very, very much. Also, I think the, the, the fact that Biden, the, the supposed president of the United States, is open, you know, he's not, he's undoing a lot of the border protection work that Trump did, indicates they do want this kind of merger of cultures and things like that. It's 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 an awful thing. And it's important not to get angry. I mean, I don't get angry with Mexicans. I don't get angry with Ethiopians in Hertfordshire. It's, there's no point getting angry with them. They're, they're, they're as much victims in this as the rest of us. They are simply the tools that are being used. They're being picked up and they're being dumped deliberately in a particular place. It's the people doing the dumping and the picking up that sh should be the focus of our ire. Um... Tessa one 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 said, "Highline wrote Starship Troopers for children, not adults." Mm, it's uh, Charles on East. Hot gossip was not for children. All oh, right, I don't know what hot gossip is. Is that a Heinlein book? Um, he did write. I mean, Heinlein wrote a lot of young adult fiction. <clears throat> I mean, Farmer in the Sky is definitely uh, young adult fiction. Uh, start. That's an. I written, read five Heinlein books. Starship Troopers actually was a kind of. It does have that idea that it's aimed at kind of like young t sort of young teen sort of mid-teens late teens it's different to some of his other books um it's in it's an interesting to read actually because it's like so controversial because it is this it has this it is this philosophical tone um and it, it presents this idea about service guarantee citizenship etc etc um and the, the film of course i watched the film bef before i read the book and um the film is not an adaptation as much as a spoof. But I, I, did, I did actually test it. I did kind of detect that it had that sort of young adult feel to it rather than his more mature work. Things like um, Friday, which is distinctly adult in nature um, and very different. So that's from his later period, 1982, that was published. Bloody good, that Friday was fantastic. I mean... Um, Oh he's, yeah, I mean, see, he's he's so good in many ways. I mean, Friday was a fan. Friday was much better than it's than Starship Troopers. I didn't enjoy Starship Troopers very much. I just thought it was a little bit comic book type. It was a bit comicy. Didn't think much of it. I mean, I know it's not fascist propaganda. It's the society depicted is not fascist. I mean, I've done an entire. If you want to go to her Panama Voice, I've done two articles reviewing Starship Troopers, and. Um, also, Sargon of Akkad's review of Starship Troopers. I've, I've done two articles. One of them about the book itself, the other about Sargon's review of it. So check out her Panama voice, .blogspot.co.uk. Um, as for hot gossip, I don't know who that is. Um, Charles Scott says on Reply to Comments 39, I can see two of my comments reply to Steve Mumbling and Charles Unleash signed in. Once signed out, they are, aren't there, so presumably they're in your spam folder awaiting approval. Out of interest, approximately how many comments a month go into your spam folder awaiting approval? Um, usually about um, a dozen. And I, and I, um, I do... Tr go I mean, you can always email and remind me, you know, but I do go there and I do, f I do approve them as soon as I can. I never delete a comment that is not abusive or um, illegal. As you know, I did delete one on... A, on I had to delete a comment on... My Charlie Veach video today. Um, I just noticed it, but you know, I've never deleted any of yours, Charles. They've always been fine. Um, same with Charles Unleashed and Steve Mumbling. <clears throat> Funny enough, Steve Mumbling is Steve Mumbling often accuses me of deleting his comments. Like again, he hasn't done it so far yet, so maybe he won't do it this time. But he has done it in the past, and I, I resent that because he's got no reason to. He knows he, he must realise it's not true. 
Um, but basically, Charles, I have approved all your... Uh, so far, I've every comment that's in the spam folder has been approved. I don't know why it goes into the spam folder. It may be because you tend to put lots of links in. But I always approve them. So um, where they will get onto the page eventually. Charles Unleashed says, No, that was your imagination. You're under too much stress. Steve Mumbling says, Face it, Charles. The only person on here that takes you ser takes you seriously believes the Queen of England is a shape-shifting lizard from outer space. It's a pretty good demonstration. That care in the community is a complete failure. Oh, Steve. Well, what if the Queen of England is a shape-shifting lizard from outer space? I don't believe she is, actually. I think she's from... Uh, it's interdimensional. The reptilians are interdimensional. And I've explained to you before, you know, as daft as the reptilian thing sounds, you know, it's there's so much evidence for it. I mean, it's, it's a weird thing to say. Got, have you seen Repcon? I mean, the, I think the videos are gone now, but Chris Turner did upload them. I was MC at a, a one-day conference in Bury, Greater Manchester, called Repcon. Uh, it was very good. A very, very good conference. Um, what's that? It's a book by Susan Reed. That was... Here we go. Um, not the bodies. What's this then? What is it? It's got a Neil Hague. Here we go, the body snatchers. Oh, hang on. I don't believe it. It's a new edition. It's a new edition. Is this the same? Is this the same book? Yeah. My God. It's just been re-released. It appears to be a, a new edition. Let me just double check. Look, there's no look inside thing. Uh, Susan Reed wrote a book called the The Body Snatchers. Now, um, it's got a, this this new edition appears to have a different cover. The the original one. Here we are. And the Body Snatchers: The True Story of Reptilian. A body snatching by reptilians. Oh, it's it's the this is the American one. Susan Reed, yeah. Now, um, feature unavailable, okay. It's got a brilliant cover by Neil Haig. I met Susan Reed once. That's, n that's not her real name. Um, I met her and spoke to her. And she was, she, I didn't realise who she was. I, I, it was a probe. I went as a probe and I met her and I was speaking to her. We were in a pub with, with, a, with a friend, with a mutual friend. And she was very, very well spoken, sounded perfectly sane. Elegant, well dressed, uh, middle class, I would say, um, probably with an education. And um, and then she just said, "Oh yeah, my husband was a reptilian shapeshifter." Really incredible thing to say. Um, I mean, there's so much more I could tell you. Um, I have talked about this before. Anyway, Charles Unleashed says to Steve Mumbling. It's a good demonstration that I'm doing my job correctly. The Queen, no. Nancy Pelosi, yes. But that's hardly a secret. Contrary to popular belief, Trump isn't a reptile, but he's closely related to Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> As for Nancy Pelosi, um, what have you been putting What have you been putting in her bowl of water, eh? In her little hutch. Because she was absolutely reeling her head off, wasn't she, the other day? I mean, she, it's like she'd had up at half a bottle of vodka. You know, or maybe she, maybe it's just dementia. And she's even worse. You know, it's, maybe it's just dementia. Maybe she's worse than Biden. Anyway, the Apollo detective fifty years on the moon. We have um, what's, just check the time. What we getting? Yeah, twenty-one minutes remaining. Cool. Meaty meat M E T E says, very informative chat, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, I did, I put in a text reply just saying you're welcome. Thanks for watching. So, and you are meaty. You are. I'll put. I'll just put this in here because I have replied to you on here as well but yeah um, there'll be another Apollo detective soon I hope that's uh, breaking news there uh, interlude Colonel Holt video removed oh yes this is uh, as I said you know it's this is something that's happened to me before as I said I almost I came close to losing my 9-11 Molyneux video um, which, well, if that happens, I will I'll cover it in a future video. But um, I've had several videos now removed for various reasons, and I always I think it's really really bad. But this one was restored. Basically, this is a, this is a different thing. This wasn't YouTube doing it. This was some idiot who didn't like it, so he decided to flag it. Um, I appealed it and got it restored. This is um, Enter the Dragon says on this video. 
I'm not sure who to believe, but if claims made against Larry are true, <coughs> Larry Warren, that he was involved in sports memorabilia fraud, he abused substances, etc., then I'm more apt to believe others. One thing I can say, if Larry is telling untruths, he's doing so very convincingly. I also heard Larry took a lie detector and test and failed. Is this a fact, anyone? I was stationed at Weathersfield as a cop and worked with the MOD. I absolutely loved it. I just wished I'd known more about this back then. Well, I actually replied to um, Enter the Dragon. I said here, Hi, Enter the Dragon. I've investigated this thoroughly and can assure you the allegations you refer to are false. I even contacted the shop in France where Larry allegedly sold a fake guitar played by Stevie Ray Vaughan for a six-figure sum. It was a lie. Mm, yeah, honestly, Larry would have been in jail long ago if, he, if this was real. He actually passed a polygraph test given to him as part of the production of Cable Green. There is more information about Larry on my channel and also on her Panmo radio if you search. That's true, yeah. Um, and Enter the Dragon says, Thanks for responding. I've watched and listened to more programmes and found that Larry had originally wanted to say he failed the polygraph as a joke and thought better of it. Maybe both Larry and Colonel Holt experienced different things at the same time. It's, it's known to happen in the paranormal world. They are both compelling and convincing speakers. In the end, I just love both stories. I haven't seen Cable Green yet. I think I'll plunk down the money and watch it. Hey, thanks, Enter the Dragon. Well, you know, you're very, it's, it will be released at some point soon. It will, honestly. Um, but, yeah, the whole thing about Larry Warren. Larry, I've said this before. Larry Warren um, was basically put in a situation where he had a personal dispute with another person. This is a f close friend of his who he had a very, very bitter falling out with. <clears throat> the very, almost the very next day after this falling out, his ex-friend suddenly discovered all this supposed evidence against him, and she put it all on her blog. Um, I was actually caught up in the middle of this because this happened during the, the Scottish uh, paranormal, UFO and Paranormal Conference 2016. I looked through it and I realised it was a fabrication. I think she made it up as part of this dispute, this, this fallout she had. And, and of course it grew legs and unfortunately gathered, it, got, it snowballed, didn't it? It gathered size and speed and it's been a bit of a, it's been a really huge, it's been a really massive, um, it's a really, really difficult mission to keep that from going any further, it really has. <clears throat> If we have Ian R. Crane dies, a, this is Pierre Robston, a worthy tribute. Ben, I remember first watching Ian on RichPlanet.net about ten years ago, talking about the New World Order and technocracy. I think you have a similar stature, Ben, in the Truth Movement with your copious output of videos, article, and conference appearances. Oh, thanks, Pierre. Much appreciate. I'm glad. I'm glad you appreciate that. I mean, with a lot of us like. I think a lot of us have been really hit hard by losing Ian. I mean, he's just like he's dropped out and he's left this huge hole where he used to be. Um, and obviously, he'll never be, he, he's irreplaceable. He'll, there'll never be another one like him. Obviously, we can, we can continue the mission that he's on. It's not going to stop. Everything he did, nothing he did has been wasted. Nothing he did has been in vain. He's achieved what he wanted to in life. And he's left behind a legacy, which is he continue. He will continue to fight from the grave, simply by this massive collection of material he's left behind, videos and things like. That. He's not written any books, oddly enough. He's never written a book, but he, he's made endless videos, recordings of his lectures, various videos, episodes of episodes of his series on UK Column. His two series he had on UK Column. Mm. Yeah, he did. Annalisa Arnold says. On the same video. Lovely tribute to Ian Ben. Much love. R.I.P. Ian R. Crane. Absolutely, Annalisa. Thank you. I know Annalisa. I met her. She's a, a good friend of mine. Legend Reel says on the same video, I've watched your excellent tribute to Ian a couple of times, Ben. We go back a long time and he will be such a loss. Well done, Ben. Good man, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, this is really... It's, um, it's affected me so much. I mean... We lose people, you know, but this is like, Ian's like a big loss. I mean, we all lose people, obviously, and it's sad when we lose members of our community. But Ian's are like a, he's a real cornerstone. You know, he really is. Ravenhill Segalia Cult Swords Merchant, 1978, said on Tolkien Film Review, new video. Um, this is fascinating, Ben. Thanks, I love Tolkien. Oh, you're welcome, Ravenhill. Me too. Glad you enjoyed it. We get a love heart for that. Oh, and we have a thread. 
on Tolkien. Nothing as it seems says. Third, spelt T-H-U-R-D. <laughs> Third. Well done. Nothing says, I'm beginning to get the Birmingham blues. Steve-O-71. 44th. Grump Skull. Yes, indeed, turd you are. Hello, Grump Skull. How are you? I, I see Grump Skull on Slacks' comments because he often comments on Slacks. As, um, but he's nice he's back on this one as well. The Birmingham Blues. Yeah, I mean, I, as I said, you know, Tolkien had a... You know, Birmingham, it's not my favourite place, I have to say. And it clearly had a big effect on Tolkien because he lived it. He lived there. He grew, he grew up in... He grew up, was born in, he, was, he, actually, he was actually born in South Africa. His family were, were um, missionaries, but I thought it was some kind of, his father was a, a churchman, I think, on a mission, and a missionary. But he came to England as a young baby and they went back to their, where they came from, their, their village, and slowly as he grew up, the city of Birmingham grew at the same rate and eventually swallowed this village up in its moor. Just like the trees in Lord of the Rings were swallowed up by Saruman, but he digs up the park around Isengard and just burns everything. Um, I really think that this experience of seeing the greenfield sites just being swallowed up by urban sprawl affected Tolkien deeply. You know, it wasn't as if they were they built elegant sit, an elegant city on top of it. I mean, Birmingham, the architecture of Birmingham is not renowned for its exquisite. Aesthetics, that should we say. Oh, uh, anyway, but thanks. I'm glad you like that, though. That seems to be popular. Han Flood, H A H A H N, nothing to do with Maggie Han, is it? As said here, four dot gen dot in. I don't know what that means, but there's a timestamp. What's this here? Hospital port. Oh, it's just like a timestamp for the what's four dot gen got in. What's that mean? Oh, not found. All right, I don't know what you're talking about. Steve-O71 says on Tolkien Film Review, hasn't Tony Topping said that Tolkien took his stories from the box saga? He did say something. Yeah, um, it's possible, you know, because, because, of course, Tolkien was inspired by indigenous European mythology. He studied it. Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Norse, um, and on things like that, yeah. I think I, I don't remember the details, but Tony, I remember he did his little talk on the box saga. It's very interesting. Um, are your Bok, Yeah. Are your Bok was a kind of it was like a, from Finland. He was a kind of Finnish version of Tolkien almost. Tolkien film review. Zephyrin Cochran says thanks a lot, Ben. Sounds great. I'll watch this movie. Oh, please do, Zephyrin. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I did, because it was a really, really good, um, really good film. Um, Ian R. Crane dies. Xoad Earth says on Ian R. Crane dies. It's quite a long article here, quite a long comment. One moment. Let's put this over here. Um, <clears throat> Let me join you in the celebration of a hero and a champion. This is X, his name is Zoad, Xoad Earth. X O A D D and Earth. In life, Ian R. Crane had the power to inspire great strength and bravery. With passing over, I know his spirit will be carried in the hearts of many. For having loved the character he shared with us, we are stronger and braver people. Amongst the most insightful and genuinely human of all people truly now, an ascended master. Personally, I used to watch Ian R. Crane live stream on Facebook, either before the work van came round to pick me up, or just about the same time as the school run. Practically every morning for years, I'd often have played his material on commuter trains into or out of London after I became self-employed without headphones, haha, which inspired meaningful conversations between groups of complete strangers and myself, often. Light and harmony to all those who knew Ian personally, I can only imagine it must have been an immense honour to have shared your life with such a great man as Ian R. Crane. For all those who, like me, were moved to shed tears for the life of a beloved teacher. I wholeheartedly embrace you as a spirit, as spiritual family. Together, let us find strength and bravery in his wake. I was working at Glastonbury in the, in the noughties. 
I remember the left field stage was very lively. I have to say, Ben, we did not get over on at all. We did not get on at all well when I gate crashed the party of conference in Wiltshire, <coughs> the after party conference in Wiltshire, a few years ago now. After watching this really heartfelt tribute, I've warmed up to you a lot. Cheers for the video. You do real justice to a much beloved Ian R. Crane and his lectures are still just about the best. I'll put a love heart on that, and really, I don't have to add any anything more to that, do I? Thank, thank you very much, Soad Earth. Tolkien Film Review. I'm looking forward to this one today, Ben, says Crafty Nihilist. Thanks so much for supporting our first live stream last night. It was brilliant seeing your name in the chat box. Oh, you're welcome, Crafty. I really did like um, yeah, the, your little drawing thing. It was really good. I, I will try to get onto others if I can. Mm -hmm. Same video, the Crafty Nine says, I don't care what's on, I'm going to review it. Three weeks later in Ben's uploads. The Care Bears in Rainbow Unicorn Land film review. <laughs> oh my goodness me, I'm gonna have to stick by my I'm gonna have to stick by it now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna have to go down there and just watch whatever's on. If it's it's something like that, I'm gonna have to watch Honestly, I'm gonna have to do that now. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Tolkien, um, Nihilus, Crafty Nihilus says, Hobbits decide the fate of all. Hmm. It's like my favourite part in 1984 when Winston is watching a prowl out of the window, a fat singing going, on about, going about her business and says, if there is hope, it lies, lies in the proles. Yeah, it always gives me hope, that bit, says Crafty. Me too. I, that's a lovely, touching scene, isn't it? It's, it's just before he and Julia are arrested and... Um, but he just sees this woman. It's like the proles are just left to do what they want in a way because the, the inner party don't really think much of them. They just see them as cattle, the way the Illuminati see us. And so she's allowed to sing these old nursery rhymes and things like that while she's messing around in the window uh, outside. And and then it's the outer party that are controlled so much. you know. Evansland audiobook part five of five. Lime specs. Connie, what a scumbag. Yeah. But um you'll know that he gets he gets his just desserts though, doesn't he, Lime Specs? I wasn't gonna let I wasn't gonna let him get away with that, was I? <laughs> Tolkien film review. Charlie, will you do an episode on the twenty twenty one census? Oh right, um <coughs> I've got a little story to tell you about that. I w I'm not gonna do that this year. No, I mean um the 2021 census, I, of course, I covered extensively 10 years ago when it happened. Goodness me, time flies. But um, I found it because people were asking me. People kept saying to me, w I'll just find the article here. Yeah. People, because I, I became quite famous for when I burnt the census form. It was actually my girlfriend at the time, census form. I actually sent mine back with this, some stupid messages. But people were saying, Ben, what are you going to do with your census this year? What are you going to What are you going to do? And funny enough, I, it hadn't arrived. I thought, what's going on? None of us in our house, in our flat, have received the census form. It's, that's weird. And then I thought, maybe it's gone to my last address because some of my post ends up there. But the thing is, Ackermann and Hossen, they never had theirs either. And so eventually what I found out, my, my landlord had actually picked them up from the, from the post box when they arrived and took them home and filled them out for us. Um... It's and so that's how that's what happened. Now, funnily enough, they they um, he the he told me that there's uh, there's a bit on there because he filled them out online. He said, um, well, they ask you lots of personal questions about your sexual preferences and your gender identity. Bloody, ch I mean, I thought you cheeky nosy bastards. I was really annoyed by that, and I, I told him so. And I mean, I wasn't angry with him for doing this. I mean, I don't care to be honest, but you know, I, I care that the government have the nerve. To write to you saying things like, "Oh, are you gay?" and like, "What?" They say, "Well, what is? You, how do you define your sexuality? Straight, gay, bisexual, etc." Um, and um, I thought to myself, I wouldn't go up to a bloody stranger and the first thing I'd say to them is, "Are you gay?" Even if I thought they were, and I do meet people and I think they're gay. I don't ask them. I would only, I would only reach that subject if I knew someone really well. But then the government come up and they ask us these questions. They're so they're so damned arrogant. They really think nothing of us. 
so that's that's what happened to the 2021 census form. Dag Jab says on Ian R. Crane dies. <clears throat> Sad news, R.I.P. I never knew Ian, but he seemed like a sincere and passionate chap from the talks and videos I've seen. What's strange is that there's been no mention of Ian's passing from David Icke, not a whisper. Well, none of his bit shoot videos I watched, that is. Why, I don't know. Even Mark Devlin never mentioned it in his recent videos. Though I heard he mentioned it on Facebook, but I don't go on it. And it's B. Oh, right, I haven't checked. I mean, uh, David didn't mention it, no. Um, did Mark not mention it? I, I, I saw Mark's made a couple of videos and didn't. he may not have mentioned it. It's, it's may not because they, it's not that they don't care. I think they just... Excuse me. It maybe they just decided not to go into it. I don't know. Um, I know Mark was very fond of Ian and respected it, respected him deeply. Um, I haven't spoken to Mark for a while actually. He's been a bit busy moving house and stuff like that. But if, when I get back in touch with him, I'll, I may talk about Ian. But I'm, I'm quite certain that Mark, um, Mark and David both like Ian, respect Ian, and it's possible they just never said anything because other things were getting in the way. I mean, they didn't know him as well as I did. Um, but, you know, um, Thomas Sheridan and myself, I think, were closer to him. I think that's why. But um, I'm sure they both respect David and Mark, both respect Ian very much, I'm sure. And we have Charles and... Oh, we have another thread here on Reply to Comments 39. Sorry, guys, no comments on Evans Land. I didn't watch any of it. Fair enough, Steve. Well, you know, I'm actually producing a... I'm going to try and find some way to get a text version of Evans Land out, which will mean using the scanner to produce some Word documents of the original text. Um, but uh, maybe you can read that if you want. But to be honest, I mean, it may not be your cup of tea. It's it's the sort of thing I really couldn't... Um, I couldn't... I don't think it's the kind of thing I could uh, write today. I mean, I could not write that story or anything like it today. Charles Unleashed says, um, You missed a disclosure tree, Steve. It's all about Welsh aliens who are rugby players and opera singers. All of them called Di Jones. There's Jones the lizard and Jones the insect. Jones the sentient cloud of gas. Jones the little green man. Jones the warp drive. Jones the anal probe. Jones the cow thief. Jones the blues brother. Jones the death ray. Jones the remote viewer. Jones the hoax. And not forgetting, of course, Jones the government agent in a bedsit. Charles... Too many spoilers, man. Too many spoilers. Come on. Let people read it for themselves. Uh, and Crafty laughs at that. <clears throat> and she, uh, Jones the cow thief. Charles says, yes, that one does things to cows. Just have a joke at the expense of Linda Moulton Howe. Um, Crafty says, you forgot Jones the Greer trouser shrinker. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Look at my testicles, framed in denim. Yeah, I am in. I am invincible. Uh, Charles says the only thing that gave me more nightmares than I feel fantastic was that interview with Greer, legs akimbo, showing his crotch to the world. What do you mean that interview? There are about there are about fifty interviews like that, Charles. <laughs> Steve mumbling. You forgot Jones the Ostrich. All oh, right, what's this? Jones the Ostrich. Oh, we have a link here. What's that? Sonny boy. Well, come on. I say, come on, boy. Lego. I want the whole world to meet my new son. Hey, dog, this is my new son. Oh, it's, Ain't he the it's Fog on Lego, and he's got like a baby ostrich, and there's a doggy. The dog. prettiest little old chicken you ever saw. On the contrary, he's the ugliest chicken I ever saw. Now look what you've done. You've given him a complex. Oh, he sticks his head in the sand. <laughs> uh, Steve says to Charles Unleashed, so that's what people mean when they say Greer is a sock puppet. <laughs> Very good, Steve. Very good, yes. He's got a few down his trousers, I'll tell you, rolled up. <laughs> Charles says, I guess it is. Where, where Greer's crotch is concerned... We'll never meet again. <laughs> Charles says to Steve Mumming, lots of people stick their heads in there as an ostrich, Steve. They feel safe up there. Mm. Steve Mumling says, I stuck a Toyota Prado in an emu recently. Very similar critters. I thought you were in the UK. It's 320 there. All right. Charles says, dual citizen, 
by virtue of an Air Force family. I'm still 10.30 time. I guess the Rue you hit last week has company now. And Crafty says, I have nightmares. Mark's ambivalent. Charles. I promise that I will never, I will never sing We'll Meet Again to that either. All right. <laughs> So Steve Mumbling ran over an emu. Called. I think it's Australia. It's, Australia's awful. You know they have those big metal bars over the front of the headlights and radiator because the damn... Um, oh, th there's so many big critters that sort of wild animals that run across the road. Oh, and it's the end of hour number two. And I'm almost halfway through, which means I'm estimating this will go for four hours. So we'll come back in a little while uh, with hour number three. Okay, I'm back. Right, well, uh, Tolkien Film Review, T. Garner says, Ben, I hope you're okay, fella. Listen, I cannot my favourite video of yours. It starts with a skyscape. Oh, right, I think you mean you cannot find. It starts with a skyscape outside a and b room in St. Anne's. I remember that you questioned the Lisbon Treaty. Oh, right. Um, and I say, I reply in text, I'm not bad, thanks, TG. It's clearly one of my pro ones. I'll find it for you. Give me a while. Oh, I never found it, did I? Oh, I'll, I'll just find it now. Hang on. I, I, sorry I didn't do that, mate. I'm sorry I didn't do that. But let's just find it now. I'll just quickly go to it and just uh, create a studio. Should be easy enough to find. Content. It, you, I'm surprised you can't find this yourself, actually. It's, um, but I know, the, I know exactly which one you mean. Show It's 54 videos. Which one is it? Uh, let's have a look. I know which one you mean. Um, blah -de blah. Hmm. Hmm. And more. I think it's final thoughts. Oh bloody heck! I should have looked it up. Sorry. Day two review. Hang on. I'm, I'm determined to do this because I mean I, I meant to do that earlier. Um, why is it this one? Let's have a look. There. No, it's not. Um, back. Oh, I know it's, it's uh, final thoughts. Let's have a look. Hospital Port has pride and dignity. Stop the new ufologist, a former ufologist who's turned very much against you. Oh, what is it now? Um, do you know what? I feel really bad about Look, I, I feel really bad about this. I can't find it for you. Um, T. Garner, if you just go to my, go to my channel, put in probe, P-R-O-B-E, into the search section on my catalogue. It's one of 54 videos. Uh, it's one of the shorter ones because I know which one you mean. It was it was in the old days when I didn't sort of like amalgamate them together, uh, where they used to used to be allowed comments, replies, and things like that. These days I tend to edit them in different clips. I used to do each clip separately. Interestingly, if you watch if you watch, I've actually edited I've re-edited all the old probes into like single segments and put put them on the alt text. So on the alt text, they're different. Sorry about that. I really am T Garner, but check that out <clears throat> anyway. Um, Tolkien says Trevor Murray. Hey Trevor Murray, how are you? One state to rule them all. All right. Trevor Murray, exactly. Trevor Murray is a Canadian chap who you may know from the Mindset podcast and also from Third Rail Radio. Third Rail Radio is a show that he and I co-present on Hapanro Radio. So do check that out. Hapanro-radio.blogspot.co.uk forward slash Third Rail Radio. I'll just give Trevor a sub, actually, because he's a good guy, old Trevor. Oh, he doesn't have any content. It's a blank channel. No worries. Um, Tolkien says... Oh, sorry. Trevor says on Tolkien, if I could transport to any universe without hesitation, I would choose Middle Earth. Oh, it would be... It would be nice, actually. I think I'd be happy in Middle Earth. I really would, Trevor. Yeah. I think... Uh, I'd probably... I'd love to be... I think I'd like to live in Gondor, I think. Um, definitely. Uh, Denise Moore says on Ian R. Crane Dies... So sorry to hear about your friend. May he rest in peace. Thanks, Denise. Much appreciated. You know what? I mean, you, I know where you live. You live in, like, in Western United States. You may well have seen him because he, he went everywhere, Ian. He, I think he just went absolutely everywhere. So you may have seen him at some point. 
Uh, Line Spec says um, on Evansland audiobook part five of five. I finished. I can't believe I've listened for over a day's length of audiobook. That's right. Yeah. Well, well done, Lime Specs. Well done indeed. I'm glad you. It's that's quite an achievement, I must say. Um, obviously, like the thing about an audiobook is it's quicker, isn't it? I mean, you couldn't. It's it's like a day's. God, it probably take weeks to read like normally a book of that length. Snowy Sunday. <laughs> T. Garner says, um, when I lived in Holland from 1991 to 1998, there used to be channels, a channel of train journeys drivers can view going through Switzerland, Germany, other countries. I used to watch it from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. It was out of this world when you're 10 to 17 years old. A channel, oh right, like a YouTube channel or something like that. Yeah, um, well there was no YouTube back in those days, but there were like various things you could watch oh, on TV, yeah. See, there's lots of these things. Nor Norway is particularly particularly likes this sort of thing. All oh, right. But, I mean, it's, it's, I love these sort of, like, slow, meditative videos. I really do. Ian R. Crane dies. Uh, Martin M. Beard. Hi, oh, Martin. Hi, Martin. How are you? Hope you're all right, mate. Good to hear from you again. Lovely tribute, Ben. Hope you're well, mate. Be good to speak to you again soon. Yes, you too, uh, Martin. It'd be great to... I, I've, Martin, I've interviewed on Panmo Radio, and um, we, we've got some mutual friends. We've met a few times um, in the uh, original Oxfordshire and Berkshire seek, um, Truth Seeking Group. Um, what's it called? Seeking Solutions, yeah. Oxfordshire, Berkshire, Seeking Solutions. But look, yeah, good, to, good to hear from you again, mate. Yeah, good to hear from you. Um, and here we have Oxford Graffiti, new video. Bluebeam says, I know you secret, Ben. Ben and Winston Churchill are the same person. Don't trust him. <laughs> Never so much been so many hospital porters been owed by so many hospital porters to so few non hospital porters. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, Winston Churchill, I mean i if you if you watch the if you listen to the archives, I think they're on YouTube, you can hear quite clearly. The voice is the guy who does the, he did the BBC radio Winnie the Pooh. And it's the same guy, yeah. Charles Unleashed, makes you proud to be British. Yes, indeed. Um, Alex Ritchie, hi Alex, how you doing? Charles, Charles Unleashed says, sorry, says to Charles, personally I'm an earthling. Countries are divisive by their very nature of their man-made invention. Charles says, pretty sure plate tectonics are natural occurrence and not man-made. John Nolan. Is the Queen a racist? All right. Um, <clears throat> I don't think countries... Actually, I don't think countries are divisive necessarily. Actually, I used to think that, but I don't anymore. Um, countries... The, the nation-state order of the world seems to be fairly stable. It's worked quite well for many, many centuries. And it's being undone right now by the Illuminati. The whole purpose of the EU and globalism is to undo those, those boundaries. And I think that's... I think as long as, as long as countries are representative of the people in them. For example, there's four like nationalities within the Iberian Peninsula, and only two countries. So you have Spain and Portugal, basically. And Portugal only became independent about 100 years ago. Uh, but there's, there are four nationalities. There's Portugal, there's, there's Castile, which is the natural area where Spain is supposed to be. Uh, there's there's um, Arag Aragon, which is the, basically Catalonia. And there's Navarre, which is basically the Basque country, which includes parts of southern France. I mean, I'd be happy. To, I actually supported the Catalan independence movement before I realised that the bloody, the bloody Catalan independence movement is just it's just like Welsh nationalism, so called, and Scottish independence. It's it's federalism. It's basically saying yes, we support the independence of our countries, our nations. So we're going to split them off from the countries they're a part of and suck them into the Brussels Empire in the European Union. There's a guy called Simon Harris, actually. He was a British guy, he lived in Barcelona. Um, fluent Catalan speaker, really gone native. He, he died, sadly. Um, he, he, he's been reporting on this. He's reporting. He, he, just before he died, he reported everything that had been happening within the, the Catalan nationalist movement. Yeah, it's... Um, anyway, that's a long subject, Alex, but you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's necessary divisive at all. And um, Charles Unleashed says, pretty sure plate tectonics are a natural occurrence. Well, maybe they're not, Charles. Maybe the Earth is flat. Whew, I said it. Ah. 
John Nolan, is the Queen a racist? <clears throat> I don't think I think the word the word racist is so misused and overused that it essentially has become meaningless. Uh, is is the Queen does the Queen like different humans of different colours? I don't know. I think the Queen the Queen being an Anunnaki reptilian probably has a very low opinion of all humans, of all hues and creeds. And I doubt if she favours one over others. She probably sees us all as um, prey. You know, if we, when they, one of them's thrown into her cage, she probably doesn't get her colour coding chart out. She probably just goes <laughs> and drinks their blood. Um, as for, and by the way, uh, John Nolan, you, you may be interested in my video. I did, I did it before the interview on with Oprah, but um, I decided not to report on that. There was no point. But um, I did a video which because I cover all the all the important issues I cover in the video. It's just called. Uh, Megxit is complete. It's a recent one I did about Harry and Meghan. Andrew Munchkin says on Oxford Graffiti 2021, Graffiti is communist and done in countries that are not communist. Communists just want to deface others' property to challenge ownership rights. Research where communism began and by what group. Um, firstly, um, graffiti is not all communist. I know there's communist graffiti. I mean, I've, I, well, I think I'd, I saw some of it. I think I... Yeah, I showed you something on the bridge, didn't I? On the bridge over the Thames, that, that's the railway bridge going towards the, the Cowley Works. There's this old, it says so, peace and socialism. That's been there for years. But not all graffiti is communist. No, I mean, the, the graffiti I'd refer to today is not communist. I mean, there's, the, there's that little stencil of, of Kim Jong-un, which says obey, which is distinctly kind of like satirical of communism, you might say. But you're right about what communists want to deface and others' property challenge ownership rights. I, I know where communism began and by what group. It's um, basically the group it began with are the, basically, it's basically psychological warfare manipulators from the Illuminati. They, or those who use them, people like, or th those who are used by them, like Karl Marx, John Ruskin, um, Frederick Engels, and these others. I mean, it didn't begin with Karl. Karl Marx is like the most famous because he invented Marxism, but, um, yeah, they it, it, it's it all goes back to this plan where you could simply what was it? It all goes back to the same basic plan as the Great Reset today. You know, you will own nothing and you will be happy, like old the boy from Brazil, um, Klaus Schwab. Yeah, and uh, Steve seventy one says on Oxford Graffiti, do you carry doggy bags for your doggy friends, Ben? Oh yes, of course. You know it's. I don't know why they can't train dogs to use a toilet, you know. I mean, it's like, if you, you train dogs to do all kinds of things. I mean, they can guide a blind person around town. They can fetch a newspaper. Surely they can sit down on a bloody bog and pull the flush when they're done. Alex Ritchie says on Ox Graffiti, um, lawful and legal are completely different. You know that, Ben. Yes, I do, Alex. If I, if I may have used the wrong word, in which case I apologise. Uh, but I, I, to describe what I meant there, um, Alex Ritchie said on Oxford Graffiti, the UK water to be fluoridated. I look forward to your reply to comments video. Oh, good, Alex. It's here now. Um, they, not all UK water is fluoridated. They're still allowing local people to, local authorities to make up their own mind. It's not, honestly, though, if it's happening in your area, you need to stop it, definitely. <clears throat> Tanya Cummings said, Get a Genzen water filter, Korean company, sold through various agents. All right, does it filter out fluoride? That's good, because, I mean, fluoride is very, very difficult to filter out. Uh, most people I know are, are distilling. Uh, I mean, f people are distilling if they live in fluoridated areas. They uh, tend to use a still. That seems to be the best way of getting rid of it. But uh, if there's another way without distilling, it's, it's better, of course. Uh, um, yeah, if they're fluoridating in your area, get bloody stop them, I'll tell you, because it's, it's mind rot. Absolute mind rot. Um, Oxford Graffiti, Alex Ritchie says, hope if Trump and the White Hats are the only hope, then he and they are taking us, taking their fucking time about it. Fluoridation, geoengineering, microwave frequencies, nanoparticles, prion brain fuck faxes, and never-ending indoctrination via TV. Schooling, LMFAO. Media as a whole, what the fuck? Why are these cunts not dead yet? I imagine some in the news are clones, stand-ins, or plain old CGI, blue tech, blue beam tech. If the event don't happen very soon, we're doomed as a species, simple as that. Well, Alex, 
you know, I'd love this all to be over with now. I really, really would. I hear you, mate, and I've, I'm, I'm in the trenches with you on this. I really am. <clears throat> um, but, you know, look at what's happened. Look at what has happened over the last five years and just think to yourself, how the hell, how the hell did we go from before that to now? And do you really think that the similar levels of change won't happen between now and the next five years? Because just imagine what the next five years will be like. There are no guarantees. There are no guarantees. But for goodness sake, I don't know what the future is. All I know is that if, if, we, if, it was all, if we were all doomed, as, as some people in the truth movement say, there's, there's no point, we're all hopeless, it's all over. Then, and, or, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Then how did 2016 have to take place? 2016 couldn't happen in that kind of environment. Look what's happened since then. Look how how much effort has been has been uh, they've gone into to try and put a stop to it. They actually staged the death of an MP in Britain. They actually rigged. A, they didn't secretly rig an election. They openly, and blatantly rigged an election in the United States. These are these the, this new world order is frightening. It's on the run. That's a rearguard action, Alex. Look at look at Biden and Pelosi and all these others now, crouch, trembling, crouching around, biting their nails with fear. Pelosi's so scared she's hit the bottle. You know they they they're not these aren't victors. They what they did in in November 2020 was a very pyrrhic victory, even if you can call it that. They know they're on borrowed time. Look, they wouldn't have these big massive roadblocks around the Capitol, which were attacked the last yesterday by this Nation of Islam person. Honestly, you know, you just get real. I, would, I mean, not. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not having a go at you. You're, you're a good guy, but you know, don't give up. That's what I'm saying. Don't, don't give up. Snarlock, hello, says an Oxford graffiti. <clears throat> I remember an episode from a Channel Four series twenty odd years ago called "Faking It," in which a private school educated art student called James Sawyer learns how to become a street graffiti artist. He also tried his hand at rapping with hilarious results, something Mr. B, the gentleman rhymer, wouldn't approve of. Oh, yes, Mr. B. <laughs> He's funny. Oh, Mr. B. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, the gentleman rhymer. Oh, he's so funny. I, I, check him out, man. He's got some great... Um, he's got this... Um, what was it? Um, just like a chap. And he plays his little ukulele and that. Um, and he's, he's this really posh bloke who does hip-hop type things. He's got a song about cricket. He's got an album actually called I Say. Hmm. But um, I'm not, I didn't see that actually. But um, it's amazing what people can do. You know, people can, but uh, people can go undercover in that sort of way and slub it the way they do. <laughs> <laughs> Graffiti says, uh, Snarnock says, I've seen graffitis of equations and derivations of equations around Cambridge. Have you ever seen something similar to that in Oxford? I haven't, Snarnock, and you assume that would be the case, because Oxford, of course, is the other big Illuminati indoctrination training centre, along with Cambridge. Uh, Oxford probably even more so in terms of its Illuminati status. Um, I don't, I, unless Cambridge has something equivalent to the, uh, the Rhodes Trust, I don't know. Um, but... Uh, yeah, you'd think you'd see that, but I don't. I mean, maybe I'm in the wrong part of town because I was in, like, the area I was in was kind of South Oxford and Cowley. That's the areas I was showing you in this video. Um, it's just the areas I've always lived in. I actually lived in... I lived originally in... When I first moved to Oxford, I lived in St. Clements. Then I moved to, to South Oxford. Um, and then I was just by the river. And now I live in Cowley, um, which is not far from Cowley Centre. And maybe if you go into the, uh, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do something similar in the city centre. Yeah. I'll probably see it there. You know. <clears throat> Same video. Nothing as it seems. Petroglyphs are hand-me-downs from past generations, depicting what was seen in the skies just prior to the inv invocation of all hell breaking loose. Well, you know, maybe that's why nothing as it seems. They indicate things such as in petroglyphs, thousands of years old. You see aliens and UFOs. You see flying saucers. You see grey aliens, reptilians, mantids, etc. Which mean, makes you means you might well wonder. Well, maybe the people who see UFOs were not inspired by 1940s sci-fi movies after all. Hmm. Iron Man's partner says, "Ben, you should do merch with photos of the graffiti." <laughs> I, if, if I ever 
collected photos of the graffiti. And I've done that. In fact, I was in the local newspapers once <coughs> a few years ago because I preserved some graffiti that was about to be it was about to be destroyed because there was none, there was like a, a subway under a road and it was about to be filled in with concrete. It was going to be filled in with concrete and replaced with a pelican crossing. And so I took photos of everything in it and I got into the papers. <coughs> I've actually, I've actually put the photos on the Panmo voice. If you want to find them. I would never merchandise them though. I think if, if anyone has the right to do that, it would be the, the artist. I mean, the artist has given them as a free is given this art as a free gift to the people simply by putting them on walls where everyone can see them without getting paid. It would be if they choose to change their mind and start merchandising their own art. Fair enough, but under no circumstances would I merchandise someone else's art. No way. Um, oh, we have another thread here. It's uh, reply to comments thirty nine. And it's the crafty again, crafty nihilist. Oh my god, exciting find, Ben. Remember <coughs> that song, Open Your Mind, on every David Icke video back in the day? Well, I've got it in my playlist because I love it. I'll show Mark when he shouts, Ben, take a look. Oh, what's this? Open your mind. Oh, I. So, true <coughs> or false? People should manage their own investments. Bloody ads. Absolutely. Get the bloody, bloody ads out of the way. Oh, it's me, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this. It's a good song. Yep. Yeah, it's our song Schaefer Louise. Oh, Schaefer Louise three. They've got a third one now. Oh, um, and Crafty and I just put a comment on it saying, love this song, had it on my playlist forever. Reminds me of when I was being pro reprogrammed by it, yeah. <coughs> and of course, I'm featured in the video as well, yeah. They uh, they have a little close-up of me on there. <laughs> it is me, yes. And Charles Unleash says, proof of the Mandela effect. Ben had long hair way back then, enough people remember that. Well, that is the Mandela effect, Charles, because I've been slaphead now for about, oh, 20 years or so. I used to, I did have like a big afro. I don't have the photos anymore. The photos are all my my dad has all the family photos, but um, there was a time when I had like a big afro. I looked like I looked like the the guy I was talking about earlier, Doctor Wilson. You know the one you were, I think you were linking to. I looked like Doctor Wilson. I was a white Doctor Wilson. <laughs> mm. Crafty Nile says uh, I remember him bald, but with an enigma enigmatic smile. Yeah, I've still got an enigmatic smile. Charles says. He was in his element for sure. I, I, oh, I was, yes. Oh my goodness. Hmm. The voice sample on the song is from Quarto from Total Recall. It was taken down because Ike stole the song and the video concept from USURA. -U Open your mind, but didn't truly credit him. All right, all right. He should have done that. Yeah, but yeah, it's that Quarto is this like creature. He's like a, he's embedded in the stomach of a, another man, and he's like a deformed being. I mean, it's a great movie, Total Recall. The original one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the um, Paul Verhoeven film, is bloody brilliant. Um, I've not seen the, the new one, but the, the first, the original is brilliant. And he says, open your mind, because he's psychic, this little creature. Says, open your mind. Yeah. <clears throat> but I, I, I'm in the video there, and I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, sue Jay for Louise and David Icke for putting that up. Crafty, I swear, activated theta brainwave activity. No other way to explain my current existence. I think that was just me, you know, Crafty, in it. <coughs> Crafty Charles Unley says, uh, I know it seems impossible that you would be so honoured to be speaking with Charles, but it's really happening. Yeah. <coughs> Crafty, well, once I worked out what Charles is, no doubt I'll be bowled over. At the moment, ambivalent, Charles. Think of Charles in the same way as quantum theory. Once you work it out, then everything changes again. Me and Mark have long conversations about Charles, just when we think we understand that the mist descends upon us once again. I'm so secret that even I don't know I'm an NWO agent. Maybe I am then too. Maybe I am bloody... Uh, maybe, uh, well, I deserve a bloody pay rise. You own the money, just take it. Oh, I see. I'm not quite up to speed with the politics and procedures as yet, so. Oh, these agents everywhere. I mean, there's, uh, there's more. I'm seeing more agents than Richard D. Hall right now. 
Oh, while well, we're on the subject, Charles Unleash says, on reply to comments 39, the decline in Richard D. Hall is comparable to that of Linda Moulton Howe, who has gone from 1970s reporter to falling from any old rubbish. All right, I don't think Richard generally has declined, Charles. Um, if anything, he's become much more cautious. However, uh, I think he's become, as I said, I think he has gone off. He's gone off on the on a on a bad angle at some points, especially the Randolph and Forest thing and several other subjects. Um, as for Linda Moulton Howe, I don't remember actually Linda um, her early stuff. I should watch perhaps watch her original 1980s film on Mute, Strange Harvest. I should watch that. But Charles says Linda has the excuse of being 80 years of age, though. All right, she's nearly. She's 79, nearly 80. Yeah. <clears throat> Back in the day, Richard used to make parody videos taking the piss out of himself. I remember his interviews with Charles Hall about the tall whites, and Richard was sat there thinking. This guy's full of shit, which was really funny. I don't. I never saw that one. Um, he did videos with loads of people he now regrets doing videos with. For example, Miles. He he did one with Miles. He said, "Oh, he wouldn't have those people back on his show." Um, he's now very. He's now been very unfair. As I said, I've explained earlier. I think Rich has been totally unfair to Miles Johnston. Um, but um, now he just. He obviously has changed his perspective since 2010 when he started off. But uh, short, he carries on. Shortly after, he abandoned UFOs, concluding it was all nonsense. And that, and that is the point where there was a noticeable decline in his demeanour. Hang on. Um, I don't think Richard has abandoned UFOs. And he certainly hasn't concluded they were all nonsense. He doesn't focus... When he first started out, Rich, it was Rich Planet's... Starship, and he focused 100% kind of on UFOs. This was after the Bob Lazar thing happened, but then he started bringing other things into it. And now he UFOs, he, he does go back to UFOs occasionally, but only as a corollary every now and again, like with the Bering Mountains incident. And the, and the various, so he has mentioned UFOs occasionally in more recent videos, but he certainly hasn't concluded they're nonsense. I mean, he's still he's not a skeptic about UFOs. Um, and he says, he says, then there was a noticeable decline in his demeanour, and everyone was compromised. I don't know if there's there's a connection between his ch his change of perspective, both in terms of the people he interviews and the subjects he covers, but definitely he has become more morose. He's become less cheery. I mean, less. He's become more. He's become less light-hearted since he first started out. And yes, he sometimes, he sometimes, I think is is overzealous in when it comes to um, shill shaming. As I've said before, Charles continues, compromised in what way, by whom, for what reason? It's a very broad statement that needs to be qualified, but he doesn't even know him. He doesn't even know himself. Correct. Um, I mean, he's not quite as bad as Caroline Stevens, as I said. He, he hasn't been like just simply rep you know, spreading some piece of nonsense about people around the place. But I mean, he... He does drop hints that certain people are compromised, and he does it, I think, too much, but there's no reason to. I mean, the David Icke thing he did with Andrew Johnson is a perfect example. He Most of that I, I disagree with. I wrote a review of it, actually. But, yeah, you know, I mean, he still has a... He still, I think, he's still got a very, very good angle on most things. He's still one of the most popular channels or most popular um, outlets for material on this subject, and he deserves to be. Yeah, you know, I do sometimes. I do miss some of his older stuff. I really, really do. You know, some of the programs he used to do, uh, I think, are pretty good. And he, I think, they're uh, perhaps better than the ones he does today, especially the ones with me on. <laughs> but um, you know, some of his more recent stuff is also quite good. Oxford graffiti, John Nolan. You will see a lot of Harry and Meghan on the on the walls all over the place soon. Uh, I think you will certainly see Meghan's blood on the wall of a tunnel in Paris at some point when her car drives in there you know, I think you'll see that or possibly it'll be inside the Queen's stomach at some point as well, some of it will go into the Queen's stomach obviously, or into her veins through uh, intravenous intravenous injection mm. alright Steve Mumbling <coughs> says on reply to comments 39 the voting machine company wouldn't... Oh, sorry. The voting machine company 
wouldn't be suing Powell and Giuliani if they weren't completely confident they have a good case. In other words, if they weren't telling the truth, if they were lying, they wouldn't dare bring the legal actions as they know it would end up costing them a fortune. Yes. Likewise with uh, Powell and Giuliani. Um, well, I mean, I think really the best thing we can do in this situation is wait and see what the court says. Everything you've just said about Dominion, you could equally say if Powell and Giuliani. I mean, this looks sounds like to me like a countersuit. I mean, we'll we'll see how it goes. I mean, there possibly may be some kind of out of court settlement in the long run, especially seeing as now there's so much political suppression of what happened. I mean, look, look members of the U.S. Senate when they bring up the subject in hearings now are being shouted down by the by the president of the Senate. Hmm. Charles Unleash said it could still backfire because it's a civil case. If they won the damages, Giuliani and Powell would just sniff at them anyway. This one's going to roll on for years. You're probably right, Charles. I think it will. I mean, there's there's so much at stake here. I think, firstly, I think they're certainly going to wait possibly till the end of the Biden presidency before any kind of hearing, simply because of the amount of, uh, of publicity that we approach would be um, subjected. It would be subjected to. They're also going to have to prove, I think, that I think they, they think, for example, if they have a distinct l loss of income and profit as a result of this, they would essentially that would be like defamation, which you know, if they're sort of like a resultant harm of def defamation, there's consequences, then they'll probably be in a much stronger position. However, you know, Powell and Giuliani, if they bring forward their the witnesses, they were they were hoping to put into the uh, into the Supreme Court. It could be that, that therefore the case will at least the case will be dismissed, and it's possible that as Powell and Giuliani may continue and, and sue Dominion VSC as they originally intended to, as as an alter or rather as an alternative to what they originally intended to, which was release the Kraken, and um, have the election overturned, have uh, things like that. Reply to comments thirty nine. Steve Mumbling says, when the swamp is drained. Trump will be the first one down the plug hole. No, he won't. The tr tr Trump is the only one who's not in the bloody swamp. And Charles only says, that's a bloody big plug hole. <laughs> well, if Henry Kissinger's got to get down there, it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah. And Oxford Graffiti 2021. 20, Nosy Cow, Nosy spelt N-O-Z-E-Y, said... Um, Hi there, are you still on FB? We were friends on my last account. Great video. Oh, thanks, Nosy. Well, you know, introduce me. Who are you on Facebook? I'll, I'll check you out, you know. Hmm. Oh, we have got a thread. We have a thread here. On oh, reply to comments 39. Steve Mumbling says, this, oh, this is a good opener. <laughs> the biggest problem with the truth movement is it promulgates... Zero truth. All oh, right. That's the uh, snowball that starts the avalanche, it seems. Charles Unleash says, well, that's a loaded statement. So in your own words, what does it promulgate? Yeah. Steve Mumbling says, only two words, Charles. Charles Unleashed. I was hoping you'd say that. Aren't they aren't, they aren't the same two words I would say to Charles Scott either? David Smith. <coughs> um... I remember listening to David Icke years ago before I became more of a sceptic. And to be honest, he does say some true things. A few years later, I was part of a group who sent a couple of guys to go evaluate Icke during the tour he was doing. Their findings were pretty much the same. He starts off telling some true things about inequality, corruption, etc. But then it goes bad shit. Well, you, you actually sent some... You were part of a group who sent a couple of guys in to evaluate Icke. Really? A couple of what kind of group was it, David? Not MI five, I presume. Is it just like a sceptic group? Hmm. David continues. So all the real problems they list will never be addressed because instead of understanding why these problems exist and looking ways to fix them, they're all busy chasing shape shifting lizard people. Well, the thing about it is they they will because you see the, the shape-shifting lizard people kind of are part of everything else. They're not separate. It's not mutually exclusive. It's not, you go after the lizard people and then everything else is to one side of you. All the, what is it, inequality, um, what is it, um, 
corruption, etc. It's sort of like over here, but I can only see the shape-shifting lizards, so I miss out all that other stuff. I mean, a lot of people like uh, Richard T. Hall, Andrew Johnson, that's kind of their thesis that the whole thing was set up basically to do that. To put bl blinker, you put the reptilian blinkers on, you can't see the other stuff. But what if instead of being like that, and the and the there's the lizards there and everything else the same. What if the shape-shifting lizards are all over the place and they're all a part of the whole thing? Because if they are, well, then you have a different situation, don't you? You have a situation where addressing the liz the shape-shifting lizards is essential for understanding all the other things. <clears throat> If I were a conspiracy, this is David now, if I were a conspiracy theorist, I would say the idea of a new world order was an invention to control people such as the truth movement to prevent them from waking up to the reality of those issues, actually potentially solving them. Well, um, there are people who say that. I mean, was it those woke, those idiot little wokers were shouting at David Icke in, in Canada? You're distracting people from real progressive activism. Why, what was it with, with bullshit science fiction stories and anti-Semitic crap? But it's not true. It's not true. I'm a conspiracy theorist, and I think the idea of a New World Order is not an invention. New World Order actually exists. I mean, there's so much evidence to suggest that. To say that's an invention is like saying that the world being round is an invention. Oh, ooh, the world being round is an invention, according to some people. But you know what I mean. It's something so obvious. It's like, like a truism. <coughs> and, um, and so there are th things preventing people from waking up are not... It's not David Icke and all these other things. It's not me, as Caroline Stephen thinks, and so many other people. It's not that. It's it's just like television, it's education, it's things like that. People within the truth movement. Oh, there's disinformation, all right, but not half as much active disinformation within the truth movement as, outs truth movement as outside it. Hmm. What a great scam, says David. Don't worry about fixing these real-world issues that the super-rich benefit from. Worry about these chemtrails and lizard people instead. Well, you see, I know you're being sarcastic here, but you see, I mean, it's funny because I, I read the book Superclass by David Rothkopf, which mentions Bohemian Grove. Now, what you, what you actually find is that, really, there's no... Apart from the ideas, the far-out ideas of conspiracy theorists, there's no real difference between that book... And I would say The Biggest Secret or Behold a Pale Horse by Bill Cooper. So if, if the lizard people and the chemtrails, etc., etc., are designed to distract from that or, not, or stop people worrying about fixing these other issues, they haven't worked very well, have they? It's run like this idea. Oh, Bob Lazar's put out the Bob Lazar was put out there to stop people talking about Area 51. Oh, duh! How well has it worked? Hardly anyone talked about Area 51 before Bob Lazar came along. <laughs> oh, okay. Or a terrorist attack. Oh, here we go. Oh, a terrorist attack? No, it was a secret laser space laser. Really? Well, what's, what does that mean? Uh, well, firstly, where where do space lasers come into any terrorist attack? I've not heard of that before. Apart from the people who say that some of the forest fires were started by them. I've not looked into that in detail. A super rich president? Oh, he's a good one. Don't worry, he's going to drain the swamp. Oh, that's referring to Trump. Well, yeah, David, I've actually, I know you're being sarcastic, but that's basically is what's happened. A, a rich man, and rich, rich does not equal evil. Can't, I mean, that's kind of what the Marxists say and the, other, and the leftists. And they say, oh, and the trade unionists. Oh, God, bloody hell, they were annoying, they were. Um, that kind of working class paranoia about it is i don't think it has any basis in reality yes he was rich yes he was a good man he is a good one and he did try to drain the swamp and what's more he's going to come back and succeed he will he'll come back and succeed do you think trump's gone did you hear his speech speech did you hear trump's speech at cpac well, firstly as candace owens pointed out and she with great glee about five times as many people tuned in to watch that as watch any of Joe Biden's press conferences. And Trump was defiant. Trump was basically almost saying, you know, look, I'm coming back. Um, and David continues, that's the danger with the men with mentality fostered by this thinking. They ignore the real world causes and evidence at the peril of not just themselves, but everyone else, too. Well, you see, as I've just explained, that's not I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's I think. 
if anything, I'd, I'd level that criticism at Rothkoff's book because he doesn't mention chemtrails. He doesn't mention UFOs. He doesn't mention shape-shifting lizards. He, in a sense, that is distracting from the reality. Do you see, do you see it's... Uh, you and I, I think, have a completely opposite view on this, and maybe because you are more of a sceptic now. I mean, are you? how much of a sceptic are you? I mean, I'd love to know more about this group you sent in to evaluate David Icke. <laughs> I mean, if you want to evaluate David Icke, you don't actually have to send anyone in. I mean, he, his stuff gets streamed online. You know? But uh, Believe it or not, I've done that at sceptic events. I mean, I've, you, may, you may have seen videos of that where I have gone undercover in sceptic meetings, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, some people found out who I was and they were quite happy for me to be there. So, <laughs> But Charles Unleashed says to David Smith, Well, you know what I think about Ike. He's all about the dollars and always has been. Nothing he says is original. He just plagiarises stuff that's been out there for years and pretends he discovered it. I remember back in the day when he was claiming to blow the whistle on Jimmy Savile. The real question was, who didn't know about Savile? I wor Ike worked in the media and it had been common knowledge since the 1960s. Ike is a publicity opportunist, nothing more. I don't think so, Charles. Um, if Ike was a publicity opportunist, he'd never have left Grandstand. If he was in it for the cash, he, he, would, still be, he would still be. He'd be still working in the media. As for plagiarism, it is actually a fair point that he, he often puts information out there without necessarily crediting the source. Now, um, in, in 1994, he did a talk in Liverpool where he... It's basically his first ever conspiratorial talk. And he says, you know, I never forgot. He says, I'll never forget it. Uh, a bloke turned up at one of my lectures with two big blue shopping bags full of papers and books. And I read them. And that's where basically where he got to all his Illuminati New World Order stuff for the first time, which came out in um, The Robot's Rebellion. The problem is he, he, did, he didn't like put like citations on it, which he should have done. I mean, he does mention other researchers at certain points, but he doesn't, he doesn't properly credit his sources. So if you did read that, you'd think, oh, David just discovered it. So, yeah, that's... So maybe, maybe he should credit his sources more. The bloke with, the blue, the, bloke with the, the blue plastic bags, though, was actually Dave Starbuck, who sadly passed away recently. Um, and I don't think he's ever forgiven David for that. But this doesn't... David is not like a publicity whore. And I don't think David is... I don't think David is being deliberately deceptive. I think what he's doing... I think he is... He's made... He has... It's, it's like a methodology he needs to adopt, I think. It's more... Um, it's more that, I think. Rather than him deliberately just stealing other people's stuff deliberately. As for Jimmy Savile... I mean, yeah, I mean... Fucking Jimmy Savile is... Do you remember Johnny Rotten on, on the old grey whistle test you know I mean you can actually you can see the clip the outtake that was 1978 I mean he cried when they confronted him with it today um, it's 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 horrible the way people collaborate in that way not necessarily bad people but people who just say well I'm doing my job and keep my head down and things like that I mean at, even Esther Ranson did this you know the protector of children David Smith says to Charles, I agree, but do you really think he believes some of the piffle he peddles? Ben likes to bring up how going from a sporting celeb to a crackpot hurt, his, hurt the bank. But he must have earned quite a bit by the, that point already, so why does he go around charging for all this stuff when it can be released for free? Did he blow his wad on energy crystals or something? <laughs> like you say, he's in it for the money, uh, even if he does believe some of it. Um, I don't really see what... Firstly, I don't think it's piffle. That's a that's a mumblingism. You've 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 culturally appropriated that, David. Um, and I do like to bring out how going from being a sporting celeb to a crackpot hurt the bank. I mean, for goodness me, do you know how much they earn? But he must have earned quite a bit by that point already. So why does he go around charging for stuff when he can be released for free? Well, I don't think you realise. I mean, if you want to know that, if you look at David Icke's his, his business details, you can get them. They, they are published, like his business details are published through the, oh, I forgot what it is. Is it the, the Department of Trade and Industry, whatever it's called now? A lot of people have dug this up and they've they made a big fuss about it because David like his work. They say, David, like, look, he's he's worth like, they, they point to how he's, you know, iconic or whatever it was, made £100,000 last year. Oh, isn't it awful? Look, he lives in a mansion and he drives a, like a, he drives a Mercedes. And things, all sorts of stuff like that. Then you point out the mansion he lives in is actually a block of flats. He lives in flat number eight, the infinity symbol, as he says. 
And the car he drives is actually a Proton Wirer, and it's it's a very cheap car. It's like a it's like a Toyota. It's like a kind of Toyota type car, uh, made in Malaysia for export. Um, I think it is actually a Toyota brand with a. It's it's like a rebadged Toyota, basically. I think from from Malaysia, for, and it, it's exported. My dad bought one once. This is a very cheap cars, um, but uh, charging. He says, "Why does he go around charging for stuff?" Well, well is, he, is he supposed to just give it away? Why should he give it away for free? I mean, see, you realise that if you look at the turnover of his company, right? Remember, what about the overheads? The fact that he employs he employs two members of his family, both his sons are basically employees of his. He has like offices and stuff like that. He invested a massive amount of money in the People's Voice, uh, which was set, which was stolen from him by uh, a person. Who, I think there's an ongoing legal issue to do with that. Um, he, um, but look, if you look look at this way, right? How much? I don't think he charges excessively for anything he does. All the things he does, whether it's books, whether it's DVDs, whether it's live shows, of for what you get, they're very cheap. For example, the shows he did at the Brixton Academy. This is one of the top London night spots. Now I know people who, you know, my daughter's gone there to see various bands, and she's paid like a hundred pounds for a ticket to see like a two-hour show of, of Slipknot or one of these other horrible noisy bands she listens to. If um, Honestly, right, 100 to 120 pounds to see a two-hour show by some some um, um, American knobheads with stupid clothes on, grunting at a microphone. David Icke charged 32 pounds for a show that lasted 12 hours. Do, do you know how much it costs to hire the Brixton Academy, even for a matinee sort of thing? Do you, do you, if he wanted to make a lot of money, which of course the music industry does, which is why they charge so much. Why did he? Why did it cost so little? Oh, I'm, 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 this this uh, this thread's got, getting quite long. I better get on with this thread. Um, Charles says to David, "I know for a fact he doesn't believe a word of it." All oh, right, how do you know that, Charles? Ike likes to play the pity card, claiming he became broke in order to serve humanity. Yet he was still able to have a second home on the Isle of Wight and a third home in L.A. while being allegedly penniless. His first home is on the Isle of Wight. Where's his... Where's his hang on. If his, so the flat on the Isle of Wight is his second home. Where's his first one? I mean, the thing is, he had a first one on the Isle of Wight as well. I know because he was on an episode of Through the Keyhole. I wonder if it's... I wonder if it's actually online. Hang on. Um, do you remember Through the Keyhole? And here we are, Lloyd Grossman. Do you remember... Here we are in this home of somebody who is obviously a mega star. Through the keyhole, let's have a look. I'm gonna, let's see, David Icke. Oh, if I can find it, he was on it, and it's like he actually was a. Um, yeah, I think Lloyd Grossman was in it. He's dead now, Grossman, but he. Um, all right. Um, let me just tell you what I remember. I remember David Icke was he had a terrace house on the Isle of Wight, which he shared with his with his wife and with other people. You know, you know that in, the incident with the various other women. I don't want to go. You, it's all been all over the papers about that. And they basically did this thing. It was uh, David Frost and Lloyd Grossman were the presenters in those days. But it was obviously like it was like a terrace house on the Isle of Wight. And then, of course, obviously his marriage broke up and he moved into this infinity flat. But what about the home in L.A. being allegedly penniless? I mean, where did you get this information, Charles? Are you sure? Um, I'd, love to see, I'd love to see evidence of this. And um, How do you know he doesn't believe a word of it? <clears throat> I mean, I know, I think somebody wrote to me about this saying, oh, look, I heard David say it. Okay, well, did you record him? I mean, the thing is, if you, I always say to people, if you, if you could, if you know David well enough to get close to him and you actually record him confessing, on, on like a camera, on a, on a body cam or something. Fair enough, but I mean, no one's, a lot of people who make these assertions never try to do that. Anyway, there we go. Uh, it's, it's like Sally Morgan, you know. Oh, she's cheating, she's cheating, I know she's cheating. Uh, well, do you want to go and catch her with a, a scanner like they, did, like they did to Peter Popoff, or James Randi did to Peter Popoff? Uh, I'll do that next week. But right now, I'm going to write an article in the Daily Mail saying Sally Morgan is a cheat. Do you see what I mean? Um, but anyway... Charles, carry on. 
Both places require a serious amount of cash just to get a property there. If you speak to anyone who's been around him or isn't part of his business, they will tell you he is very money orientated and always has been. Well, he's earning a living, Charles, and being very money orientated is kind of implying that the whole thing is about the money and nothing else, when maybe the money serves the purpose that he's doing this. I mean, I have I've never, I, I know somebody who knows Dave very well and, and thinks that he's, who believes that he's, believes that he believes what he says, that he's very trustworthy. I've met David a couple of times. I've met his fat members of his family and friends. I'm actually in touch now with one of, someone who works closely with him. And, well, I can't say too much at the moment, but I might, I might hopefully be, like um, involved with something like that myself. If someone is money orientated, I do wonder why they do things like David has done. If David was, if, if David was money orientated in the sense that what he wanted to do was make money, why didn't he become the UK's representative for the Church of Scientology? Was it forty pounds a month? You know, poor. Why have they charge? I don't know. Why is if David? was only interested in making money, he, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing now. And it's just saying, you know for a fact he doesn't believe a word with it. Well, present the evidence. Oh, well, that was a long thread. Not very many posts, but an awful lot to say. Uh, here we go. Uh, Lime Specs says on Oxford Graffiti, Voke is me. Truth. Is that right, Lime Specs? You are Voke. The mystery solved. The great Voke has been discovered. Hmm. Okay, right. So uh, there we are. Um... Okay, electric right. St. Friday night, part one of seven. Um, someone's asking me, right? This is it. Where where are all these where are all these videos? Right, like what I recommend you do, like if it's for any of my videos made before about twenty thirteen, you're better off watching them on Alt Tech because I've basically edited them together into new editions. I don't. Know if, I sometimes think about deleting all the old separate videos and then putting up the new versions on YouTube. I mean, um, I could do that, but. I, I can't be bothered, to be honest. I can't be bothered. It's, it's, it's easier just to go to the old tech sites. But Electric Inventors want to find, wants to find my first St. Fried's Wide Night video, and I directed him or her to the, basically just simply the, to the Hapanwo TV blog entry, which has links to all of them, plus the old tech um, versions, which is all in one go. It's all like a proper movie, all put up in one go. The Discovery Film Review. Crafty Nihilist says, you do cheer us up, Ben. We would watch if you sat there reading pets for sa the, the pets for sale section of Trade It. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hmm. Anyone want a ferret? <sighs> Gary Robinson says in Oxford Graffiti, Ben, mate, I'm pretty sure this video never came up in my feed. I just came across it by accident. Hope you're good, mate. Cheers. Oh, thanks, Gary. I am not bad, thanks. But, you know... If it didn't come up in your feed, I mean, that does bother me that this happens, but it does happen more and more that people are reporting things like, oh, I, they, I, there's people who are subbed to me and are no longer subbed. They suddenly said they hadn't heard from me for a while. They checked me out and they realised their subscription has disappeared. And, and things like that. I mean, that's all part of the shadow banning thing. I, I, I mean, I made a video about that, didn't I? Ian Arcray dies. It's a faked death, false flag, IRC, internet reality conspiracy. Oh, dear me. Something, yeah. You see, that's Charles, uh, Charles and David, and that's the, that's a good example of a, a scar wash. That's an example of someone who just believes anything. Mm. Um, Patrick Patel says on Oxford Graffiti 2021. Dear Ben, what is your view on the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine? It seems to me <clears throat> all the clever people, or those who contribute to the society, i.e. teachers and doctors, had the Pfizer vaccine. All the old people are mentally unwell ones had the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. Do you think there's a kind of ethnic cleansing going on? Hearing all these news about these countries not trusting it, etc. Patrick, I didn't know that there was like a division within the people who had one or the other. Um, I personally wouldn't have any of them. But if they are giving AstraZeneca to certain people, perhaps the old or the mentally unwell, etc., maybe, maybe this is a kind of like, oh, let's get rid of all the, the boomers before, you know, so that the, or so, I don't know, maybe they get rid of the baby boomers. Who knows? I mean, I personally would not have it. And you say you hear on the news about these countries not trusting it, etc. Well, 
They do. I mean, some countries, some countries, the leaders of some nations have spoken out openly how they're not going to have the vaccine in their country. Particularly, Mr. Fing, what's his name? President of Tanzania. What's it? Let me. Just, I want to hear his name because he's a. Hang on. Um, Pres, Pres of Tanzania. Right. Here we go. John Magafuli, Pres, Tanzania's president, dies aged 61 after COVID. After COVID rumours. Right. Yeah. Mm. He died on Wednesday from heart heart complications. Well, it makes a change from a suicide, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, he, Mr. Magafuli is one of Africa's most prominent coronavirus sceptics. Hmm. Right. It, well, funny enough, the presence of Madagascar, an island off the coast of Southern Africa, said something similar, and he died. Just a coincidence, nothing to worry about, as David would say. Thing, the thing is, like, Patrick, um, in Africa, a lot of people understand this because of AIDS. Do you know that the, the level of AIDS infection, people with, who are HIV positive in, in Britain, I think it was 30% of 1%, which is very, very low indeed. It's less than 1 in 300 people. You go to Africa and it's far higher. I mean, there's some communities where like 70 to 75% of people are HIV positive. No matter how the hell did that happen? Even if they were like having continuous gay orgies, you would never get anything near that infection rate. So where did that come from? Where, how did all these people catch HIV? This is why in a, a lot of Africans don't like vaccines. Jacob Zuma, who I don't like the bloke, but he, he did try to protect his people, his people, that is South Africans, from uh, various vaccines and from things such as the uh, AIDS treatments, the so-called treatments and things like that. <clears throat> Right, um, E.T. says, what, oh, what happened to Sarah Everard? New video. E.T. says, age 33, murdered the third of the third. Yes, they worship the number 33. That's right, yeah. Well, she disappeared on the third of the third. Presumably. I think she was killed probably soon after she was murdered. Um, or killed soon after she was kidnapped. Um, Jock of Ages says, Clapham Common, CC, the third letter of the alphabet. CC, yeah, arts, geometric... Tomsk E says, Tom, sorry, Tomic S, Tomic S says, geomatic Sarah Everard equals 714 minus 33 equals 2163636363. Pauline Phillips, yes, an excellent point. David Splendor, nice relations. And there were three replies before I added mine. Spooky. <laughs> oh, very funny. BZ Garson, three words, you're a twat. I don't know if. Um, Andy Bird, how oh, I literally just suggested that as well. Well, if you want to get you get your own back if you want, David, get your own back. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if that's the threes that keep coming up. I don't know if it's significant, but I know, as I said, there's a lot of weird things to do with Sarah Everard, as I explained in the video. Israel Diego Diego Rivera, too genius, too says on what happened to Sarah Everard. Hiram Abiff, all oh right. Hiram Abiff was the supposedly the in, in Freemasonic law was the designer of the Temple of Solomon. Hmm. David Splendid Isolation says on Sarah Everard. Only seven percent of British women identify as a feminist. Yep, and that's actually dropped from, I think, twenty eleven. I think it was it was eighteen percent self-identified as feminist which means less than more than half of those have now dropped the identity of feminist but if you go back to say 1965 it was like 48 percent to 52 percent of, of women identified as feminist which says a lot doesn't it it says an awful lot so the number of women wanting to be feminist has dropped now what the th what you have is though um as is always that happens with these cases the seven percent left t tend to be more radical you have a kind of uh, distillation effect in this situation. In other words, feminism is discrediting itself continuously, so more and more women are leaving it. Those left behind are doubling down, and they tend to be the most hardcore, the most, the most earplugged, the most, um, um, the most intolerant of other opinions, which is why, even though fewer and fewer women are feminists, the ones that are left are making a lot more noise.
like these fem like these bloody feminist grave robbers we've seen campaigning against basically against white men because of what happened to Sarah Everard talking about curfews and and normalization of rape and things like all other evil evil things they're saying same video the trooper says good stuff ben thanks you're you're welcome trooper thank you very much i actually i i, I thought this video i wondered how if this video might be yeeted actually so when people started adding comments i saved the comments i cut and pasted the comments as it happens the video is still there um it was actually another of my videos that was attacked but um I mean, these, these this day and age, almost anything can be attacked. Jock of Ages says about uh, on Sarah Everard. Ron Swanson makes the content exposing this kind of thing you're talking about in the second half of the video. He's on Sean Atwood's channel on Friday. All oh, right, I have to see that. I, I, I know Sean. I do watch Sean sometimes. Um, I have to check that out. Um, I can't take too much of the subject matter because it's so sick and hard to take for two hours straight, but you find out just how far people are prepared to go just for thrills, whether for sexual or mental gratification. You're right for not apologising about talking about it. All the best, Ben. Thank you, Jock. You're getting a love heart for that. All right. And, yeah, it's, that's another hour gone. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not something I like to think about. I mean, it's, of course, like, if half of what you see in the films like Hostel are true, it's just terrific. But then, of course, there are books like Transformation of America. Other witnesses have spoken out to say basically it is true. It actually is true what's happening. And this, what we're seeing, what happened with Sarah Everard could be a glimpse into that world. It all depends. What, we'll see what happens, whether the suspect may, I say, end up with a convenient suicide or may die of the coof or uh, something else, you know. Maybe he'll have die of a heart condition, like Mr. Magafuli, but who knows? Um, I'll just, I'll start in a minute. Hang on, D Jung. This is just a short comment, then I'll go on to the next hour. D Jungle Paul Second says, "I saw that. I forgot about Adward. Must get back to his channel. Thanks. He doesn't come up as suggested on suggested. No, he wouldn't. Uh, Sean Atwood has been he's been shadow banned just like I have, because he produces content that they don't like." What I'm going to do, actually, is I will, um, I'll have to watch that. I've not watched that particular video of Sean's, so I'll watch it. But anyway, uh, time to take a break, go on to the fourth hour. <laughs> 